Long idling hours in class finally came to an end. Time to go home and chill. Huh? Are those thugs threatening a girl? Picking on the weak? Such cowards. Oops, she saw me. Now they're all looking at me. As a Muay Thai prodigy, I most definitely will run as fast as I can from danger. It's not me. My legs have a mind of their own. Besides, I stood no chance against those big, scary guys. I might get myself hurt if I tried to help. Then she'd call me a jumpy idiot. Yet some part of me still wished I could do something. While I was pondering from afar, a guy charged at them out of nowhere, then knocked them all out. Looked like he knew martial arts. Like me. I'm Jamie, by the way, and my story's absolutely normal. Please like and subscribe. I didn't expect to see my dad home this early. Sweetie, you're back already. How's your day? Hi, Dad. All good. It's been just me and my dad since my mom passed away when I was little. He's the best dad I could ask for, but he's shunned by this entire town. He's one of the firefighters who reported to a tragic fire accident around a year ago. They managed to save many lives, but unfortunately there were casualties. After that, the fire department became the town's scapegoat just because they couldn't save everyone. However, I could see better than anyone how much my father had sacrificed. He always covered up his left arm and told me not to tell anybody about it. He considered it part of his job and still felt guilty about that tragedy. More importantly, he taught me to be willing to help others no matter what. Little Jamie did listen to him and was always helpful, but no matter how hard we tried, we still had to endure the townsfolk's woulda, coulda, shoulda nonsense. So I now live by my own rule. Don't be a hero. Hey, it helped Jesse Eisenberg's character survive zombie land, so it'd surely get me through my life. And so the happy little girl now wears a permanent scowl on her face like her armor. Thanks to my tough exterior, no one would ever pick a fight with me or speak badly about me, at least not to my face. Side effects included having no friends, getting pushed around by teachers, and being brushed off most of the time. You know, the usual cold shoulder. The next day, I was enjoying a good old boring normal day when I suddenly was summoned to the principal's office. For bullying a fellow student? What? Turns out, the damsel in distress yesterday, Betty, reported everything to the principal while conveniently placing me in that gang. I tried explaining myself, but my efforts seemed to be futile. Can't say I'm surprised. Like father, like daughter, I am seriously concerned about my students' safety, especially since street violence reigns in this area lately. Such terrible behavior is even more serious coming from you than those imbeciles. Good heavens, I hadn't even touched a single strand of hair on anyone's head. Oof, she obviously is blaming me simply because I didn't help. But speaking the truth would be like adding fuel to the fire. I believe the proper punishment for you is immediate suspension for two weeks. No, sir, I can't be their accomplice because... Because I was going to start a self-defense club for girls. Just like you, I worry a great deal about multiple attacks recently. Therefore, I want to help them be prepared. I I was trying to recruit Betty, but she was surrounded by so many of them while I was all alone. That's like fighting a losing battle. I actually ran away so I could, um, report them to you. Betty must have mistaken me for one of them. My gibberish speech went on for a good while before he finally let me go. I had to bluff my way through as many questions. Where does the club take place? When? How many members? And since he said he'd come by sometimes, I actually had to create a self-defense club and begin recruiting. The first day of the club, only a few girls came. Fine, I don't have much care for this stuff anyway. It's merely an excuse for me to be let off the hook. I grabbed the two tallest girls, then asked them to demonstrate a couple moves so the rest could follow their lead. When an assailant strikes, cross your wrist to trap his arms. Jump and boom! Boom. Yeah, boom. Did I do that right, Jamie? Jamie? Yes, yes, uh, that's it. Uh, don't be lazy, okay? Then I got back to scrolling on my phone and saw that Betty had gone public about the incident. Even someone as indifferent as me could see how much sympathy and attention Betty got after that. Her story's influence went beyond the internet when our school launched a No Bullies Allowed campaign and chose her to be the spokesperson. However, they could only propose outdated and ineffective measures, like always traveling in groups, bringing pocket knives or pepper spray, or giving in to not get any serious injury. None of which really helped, and more students fell victim. A few days later, right before English class, I saw the Good Samaritan that day. He's Aaron and transferred from another school in the area. Come to think of it, he's quite a heartthrob, which got all the girls all riled up. Do you have a girlfriend? What's your type? Sexy, cool, nerdy. I know, nice and sweet? Yes, yes. Oh, Mr. Bernardi's here. As usual, Mr. Bernardi began the lesson with a pop quiz. Today's topic was Hamlet. Okay, I knew this one. What's the play about, Teddy? Um, uh, a guy named Hamlet? Good, B+. 
Any other idea? Jamie? The play works on many levels. It's about Prince Hamlet's family conflict, their politics, how he can't make up his mind about duties, moral codes, and... Stop! F. You're reading too much into it. Well, I should have seen that coming. You suck. What did you say, Aaron Taylor? I said, aw, shucks. Wow, this guy's so much more than just a pretty face. When class was over, I came to thank him and even got his socials. He's a super handsome guy with a voice of an angel who defended me. I think I got, well, you know. Hmm, let's see what his social says about his type. Oh, Betty seemed to be getting more and more support, huh? I guess people have more compassion for delicate little flowers like her. <sighs> wow, nice. I had zero chance then. Suddenly, I heard a commotion outside, then peeked out to see my father dealing with rude neighbors. Man, I can't live the life of the local doormat anymore. If so, I had to change first. I can be like her. All right, starting today, call me Dainty Jamie. Ugh, I'll figure something out. But my life will surely be different. Aaron, your girlfriend is coming. I'll certainly need a new look to go with my new personality. The princess diary would be the perfect tutorial. First, I have to look like a princess. So I replaced my sneakers, hoodies, and t-shirts with high heels, short skirts, and all things pink and glittery. Of course, cute accessories are a must. Ting! But it would be lying if I said this new style was comfy. This morning, my long hair got caught in a keychain on my backpack. It was impossible to untangle, so I had to cut off a chunk of hair. You know what they say, pain is beauty. I went to school in my new style, and the moment I set foot in the building, people stared at me like I was an alien. Then the mocking began. Look who's talking! Last time I saw something like you, I flushed. Oh dear, that wasn't very ladylike. So I decided to change my tone to sound posh and even learned how to sit, stand, and pick up dropped items elegantly. Greetings, Mrs. Allen. Can I have mashed potatoes and beans, please? What's that? Speak up, young lady. I'm sorry. Can someone be a doll and help, please? But they just looked at me all judgy. <sighs> Stay calm. A lady doesn't panic. I slowly sat down with poise, but someone already picked up my tray. Aaron! He's freaky fast. Being a helpless pretty girl sure is nice. Jamie, you look different. <laughs> I've always looked like this, silly. Since then, we started having lunch together. I felt safe around him because he's new here and didn't know about my past. We gradually became close as we've had many things in common, like martial arts. I really wanted to let my geek flag fly high, but had to hold back. Still, it didn't mean he's used to the current me. Like, he'd not understand that I was trying to eat gracefully. Are you a slow eater or just picky? Give it to me. I was saving it for last. Also, he often brought me honey and lemon candy. Sweet! But that's because he thought my soft voice came from a sore throat. Erin, I was looking for you everywhere. Come, I want to show you something cool. Uh, we're kinda in the middle of something. Why are you always with her? Let me tell you, her father- Come here, you have to see this. What is it? Uh, well, um, flowers. Yeah, flowers. Aren't they pretty? You're weird. Like, in a good way. But weird. <laughs> Are you trying to hide an earth-shattering secret, like your true self? Am I wrong? No way. What else can I be but myself? You watch too many movies. <laughs> to keep up my fair lady appearance, I shouldn't come to the Fight Girl Club so frequently. Since the principal wasn't breathing down my neck anymore, I hadn't been there for the past two weeks. Meanwhile, I tried to talk to Aaron more often. He's very nice. A bit too nice, as in he literally took pleasure in helping others. Today, although we're supposed to walk home together, Aaron cancelled at the last minute cause... So sorry. Betty needed someone to walk her home, and today none of her friends could. How are you always in the mood to help people? Don't know. It's fun, I guess. Aren't you afraid your kindness will be taken for granted, or getting you into trouble one day? Like my... well, never mind. Have fun. I'll make it up to you. Bye. I'm fine with that. It just stings because it's Betty. Actually, Aaron wouldn't think twice about assisting a complete stranger, let alone a classmate. Was I even a little bit special in his eyes? I want to come clean to him, yet I'm afraid that will only make him distrust me and leave me like everybody else. This uncertain hell is driving me insane. I'll ask him out to clear things up. Ugh. Just a dumb text from my self-defense club. Delete! Eek! He said yes! That's a good sign. Sunday came, and after we bought our tickets, we saw a girl struggling with dozens of grocery bags. Oh, that's Pooja from school. Erin hurried over to help with the bags. We had some time before the movie started. We walked her back and found out that she's volunteering at a soup kitchen for homeless people. Thanks so much. 
You two are here anyway. Want to join us? We always need some help here. What? Free labor? No, Absolutely, no sorry. problem. We got tickets to a movie, right, Aaron? I don't think it's too late to change our plan, though. I had to pull him aside immediately. Aaron, what if we're too helpful so they keep us here until late? If not, we'll get yelled at. And if we leave early, they'll have something else to say. I don't know, maybe this isn't a good idea. Come now, so complicated. Just flat out say you don't want to help. Don't be ridiculous. It's our date, and we shouldn't let it go to waste. I'm ridiculous? Okay, but at least I'm not selfish and conceited. You don't want to feed the homeless? I'll stay and give them a hand. You can leave. Hey, what's the matter with you? Don't think you're better because you help everyone you see. Oh, so now we're being honest? Fine, my turn. I didn't listen to what everyone said about you and still became your friend. Turns out they're all right after all. Like father, like daughter. What are you talking about? You... You you knew everything? Yeah, I'm not dumb, and that's not all. Now I finally believe my dad died in that fire because of your dad's negligence. Then he stormed off, leaving me stunned. I could see he rolled up his sleeves and began happily working, while I was left out here with my heart broken. Hello there, my name is Hope. And my life just became fabulous. My parents are from India, and they moved here when my mom was pregnant with me. Things were tough when I was a baby. But when I turned seven, everything changed. My father invented this super cool app that lets you detect diseases from your phone. So we became rich and moved to Beverly Hills. Kana, look, that mansion over there belongs to Rihanna. Oh my god, Rihanna is my neighbor for real? Eek! Man, Beverly Hills was paradise. But there was one little problem. I had no friends. We moved during the summer, so I had to wait three months to meet the kids at my new school. I was bored out of my mind in our mighty mansion. One day, I decided to go to the playground. There were so many kids playing and having fun. I tried to approach some of them, but they paid me no mind. So I decided to watch them instead from the top of the jungle gym. Hey, you there! Me? Duh! Who else is flipping around like a monkey up there? Um... Are you new? We're playing princesses! Come and play with us! Yes! I jumped down so fast I almost hurt myself. But that was how I met Meg and Becky. I was shocked to find out that Becky was my neighbor. Our houses were right next to each other, and I could literally talk to her from my balcony. Meg, on the other hand, lived at the end of the street, so we decided to meet up every afternoon and play till the sunset. Then school finally started, and we were an iconic trio. Becky was the prettiest girl, with blonde hair and teeth so perfect she didn't need braces. Meg was the cheeky, sporty one, a soccer prodigy, in her words, while I was the mysterious new girl, who was friends with two of the most popular girls in school. And things stayed great as we entered high school together. I was no longer the mysterious new girl. Popularity wasn't my thing anyway. I was just glad I found my place in the tech club. Hey, Hope! Meg's asking us to go to the mall this afternoon. You coming? Oh, I can't. My family's celebrating Diwali today. Diwali? That sounds exciting. Can I come? Um, we have never had non-Indians for Diwali before. But since you're my bestest friend, I doubt that my mom would mind. Yay! By the way, I have something for you. Here, whenever we're close, it will glow like this. Whoa, did you make these? See, you're really talented. If you would, Becky, we've talked about this. Joining the tech club is enough for me. Now let's get going before my mom scolds us both. Becky came over immediately, and she was so excited. She helped us set up and helped me wear my sari, and even joined in the prayers. Everyone was happy to have her around. Diwali went great. My mother had the best time teaching Becky about the Indian culture. Later that evening, a heavy rain started, so Becky stayed for the night. We were having tea in the living room when I heard a loud bang on the door. I opened up, and it was Meg, soaked in the rain. Oh my god, Meg, are you okay? Becky said to wait for you guys at the park. I was waiting when the rain started. I went to her place and was told she was here all day. Why didn't you tell me? Oh no, Meg, I'm so sorry. I meant to text you, but I forgot. You forgot? We've been friends since we were in diapers, but the moment Hope showed up, you abandoned me. That's not true. What's that on your wrist? Hope's too? They're friendship bracelets. I can make you one if you want. So that's how you think of me all this time. Just a surplus? Meg, wait. She didn't stop, but walked straight into the rain, and everything changed from that day. We tried to make peace with her at school, but she acted like we were invisible for days, and even started a new clique with her soccer teammates. Poor Becky. She seemed so hurt. Well, well, if it isn't the lovebirds. Tell me, Becky, how does it feel being replaced? Hurt, right? We get it. You find new friends. No need to rub it in our faces. Ah, uh, Hope. Have you been shopping at Goodwill again? Are things good at home? I think the homeless person you borrowed this coat from needs it back. Remind us, Meg, does your mommy still need you to cut meat into little pieces before you eat? That was four years ago! How dare you! Was it? 
What about those bed accidents? Her minions cracked up. Even Becky couldn't contain her giggling. From that day on, Meg was determined to get on our backs. We figured out she must have been mad at us still, so we decided to keep distance every time we saw her. I finally got time for myself, but suddenly Becky came rushing in. Hope, I just saw the tech teacher put a sign-up sheet for the annual national tech competition. And guess what? I already signed you up. This is the year you'll kill it. Bex, you should have done that. I'm not ready. That competition is a cutthroat. What if I don't make it past the group stage? Well, you know what's worse? Not showing up at all. So you have to give it your all and create something. You can do it, Hope. No, you don't- Hello, ladies. Yuck. You again? Can't you see we're in the middle of a conversation, Charles? I'm not speaking to you. Hi, Hope. I saw your name on the sign-up. I know you're going to kill it. Stalker alert. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Even though I am doing this against my will. If you want, I could help you brainstorm. No, I'm good. I I'll figure it out. When would you learn? Even if she was on fire and you were the last drop of water, she would still say no. Move on. You've been obsessed with her since middle school. It's not cute anymore. Becky, that's mean. Let's go. Becky later apologized to me and said she only wanted to help. Besides, the winner gets the prize of a whopping $80,000. I bawled my eyes out at the amount of zeros. That's it. I decided to give it my all for this one. I was working all night on designs, which made me so tired and cranky at school. But so far, I had nothing. One day, I overslept and was so late to school. I was running to catch the end of first period when I felt an arm grab me. Hey, are you okay? You look exhausted. I'm fine. Stop following me around, Charles. No, I don't want to hang out with you. No, I don't like you. Please leave me alone. Just then, the bell rang, so the hallway was filled with students, and they all heard what I said. Everyone was laughing at Charles. Tell him, bestie. We don't like you, Charles. Scram! I was about to apologize when he walked away in shame. Maybe it was for the best? I was getting tired of rejecting him every day. I had too much to work on. I had an idea for an app and knew that my family depended on it. In no time, I stopped worrying and started feeling confident. My app was indeed a masterpiece. One day at recess, I was in the bathroom stall when I heard the most disturbing things. Did you hear the thing about Hope? I heard that her father's app is a failure now, and that they're so poor they might have to live in trailers soon. Yeah, I heard it. Who would have thought that high and mighty Hope used to live in a trailer? How tragic. <laughs> My head was spinning. My family problems were a secret. Who could have told them? That witch Meg? There's no way she would have known. Then it hit me. It was Becky. She was the one coming to my house all the time. That's why she enrolled me into this competition for the money. She knew. I could feel the anger boiling in me as I moved to find her. I saw her by the bleaches, sitting alone. Great. Becky, how could you? Before I could finish my sentence, a slap landed on my face. It stung so bad that I couldn't see. Don't ever come close to me again! Don't ever say my name! I don't ever want to see you again! What are you talking about? Ugh, I'm the one who should say that! You're seriously playing the victim after insulting me? She ripped her friendship bracelet off, threw it at me, and stormed off. The whole school watched as I stood in confusion. What the heck just happened? I tried to reach out to Becky, but it was impossible. She'd cut me off. Was that how little she thought of our friendship? The next few days at school, everything started to make sense. Becky had a new best friend, and it was none other than Meg. I was so upset watching them at school, while I sat alone every day. Later that day, I was in gym class when the witch approached me. Looks like you're flying solo now. Jesus, gloat all you want. I'm out. What's with that attitude? You usually have a sharper tongue. Cut your nonsense. I know you did this. You were so jealous of our friendship that you just had to destroy it. What? It wasn't me. Have you seen the video? What video? Meg showed me a video of me bad-mouthing Becky to a group of girls, but I didn't do this. I know. As much as I hate you, I know you'll never say anything bad about Becky, which means that someone did you dirty. Oh, I didn't expect you to pick my side, but you're so right. That person must have spread that nasty rumor about my dad's business and got me thinking Becky was responsible, since she must have been the only one who knew. Does this mean it's true? Yeah, I've been hoping to win the tech competition prize and help that out. Well then, you should focus on the competition. I'll talk it out to Becky, don't worry. You do that for me? Yeah, I guess I knew all too well what it felt like to be left out. I'm really sorry about that. It's alright, Beck and I made up. I guess I was a bit jealous, since it was always you and Becky. And we've never had a chance to hang out one-on-one -on -one either. I really hope all these drama can end so we could just be the iconic trio again. Thank you. I really hope so too. One week later, the tech competition was finally here. I was so ready to unveil what I had been working on. Mom and Dad were also here to cheer me on. I walked to write my name on the sign-up sheet, and the name before mine shocked me to my core. That's right! I'm here too! 
Oh, meet Evans, my partner. He's one of the most brilliant inventors. My parents hired him to help take you down. But why? Why? I've been nothing but nice to you, but you only think of me as some dumb blonde. I was the one who enrolled you into this competition. I was the one who befriended you. You'd be nothing if it wasn't for me. It's about time you learn to appreciate your friend. Becky turned away. Meg tried to stop her, but to no use. I suddenly felt this weakness in my knees. I couldn't help the tears. I let them flow freely. Oh, Kana. Listen, you have to focus. Remember why you are here. If we have to start our lives afresh, then no problem. I did it before, and I can do it again. Don't let her clouded judgment tell you where you belong, my darling. I gave my dad the biggest hug and went into the hall. He was right. I couldn't let Becky take this day away from me and my family. When my name was called, I walked proudly on stage and started my presentation. Hi, all. I came here because I want to tell my story. Growing up, life hasn't always been easy for me. Until I found friends who changed my life. And even if there are ups and downs along the way, I will forever cherish the memories we had together. So I came up with this idea of an app called Memoir Lens, made only for you and your loved ones, where you can store and share your memorable moments with them. Best part is the app will notify you annually, so you can relive those moments again. The hall erupted with applause. Everyone loved my app and I ended up winning the competition. I couldn't believe it. I was so happy. I saved my family. Later that night, my home was packed with friends and family celebrating. I was having such a good time. But then, the thought of Becky and Meg crossed my mind. So, I took a walk. I was just at the end of the street when Charles appeared from nowhere. Hey, I heard you won today. Congratulations. And you're having a party. Did you forget to invite me? Oh, um, it's just for my family and close ones, so... Oh, <laughs> I get it. Does Becky come too? I heard she slapped you in the face. Ouch, that must have hurt coming from your BFF for life. Do you see how it feels now? Nobody likes being humiliated. Wait a minute, it was you! You did this! Of course I did, moron. And let's be clear, it wasn't because I was so heartbroken. Yuck. I just wanted to date a popular girl. And you seemed... Easy. But then you humiliated me. So I created a fake AI video saying nasty things about you with Becky's face. And the same for her. And you guys fell for it. Look how weak and powerless you are without your friend. Pathetic. <laughs> with all the anger and pain I felt, I grabbed Charles by his shirt and slapped him silly. I was ready to beat him up, but he scampered away, laughing like a psychopath. I ran to Becky's house. I had to tell her the truth. I banged on the door for minutes before she opened it. It was Charles. He made a fake video to separate us because we humiliated him. What? Are you making this up to mend things? It's not gonna work. It's over. No, wait! She's not lying. I heard Charles confess. I even have it recorded. They happened to stand right in front of my house. Becky watched the video, and it started to hit her. Oh my god, that idiot. Oh, Hope, I'm so sorry. I should have listened to your side. And I said all those terrible things to you. Oh, I'm too ashamed of myself to even face you. It's okay, Becky. I just miss my friend. I also happen to know you pulled out of the competition because you couldn't do that to me and my family. I'm so sorry I even tried to. Then we both laugh away. Hey, Meg, why are you standing there dumbfounded? It feels like I'm third willing, you guys. I'm just gonna head out so you guys can have your moment. What are you talking about? Meg, you're a part of this group, and this time we're not gonna let you leave. Yeah, if it wasn't for you, we'd probably still be fighting by now. So come here, you. I missed you guys. I'm sorry I was so mean. It's okay now. Now, how do we make that punny Charles pay? <laughs> <laughs> no one told me it's this windy up here. I'll probably be wiped off of Earth before I could wipe all these windows. It's okay, Harper. Remember, you're doing this for Aaron. Just a bit of tough work for now, but imagine the incredible time you'll be having at the concert. Imagine, oh my god, Aaron and her? Hold up, let's start from the top. Hi, I'm Harper, the biggest fan of the greatest boy band, The Statics, especially their rapper Aaron. I turned 18 not long ago, and I'm taking a gap year to find my true passion. To be honest, I'm not really interested in anything. The only thing that makes me feel alive right now is fangirling, following my boys around, concerts, touring, etc. But after months of that, I'm totally broke. Not to mention Aaron's having his solo debut album. So, having no choice, I asked my super sweet boyfriend Kirk to lend me some money. But, again, all you ever did was spend relentlessly on this trash. You don't study, nor get a job. How are you expecting to afford it all? Do these idols feed you or give you a roof over your head? I don't think so. I can't help you forever either. Trash? He called my passion trash? Excuse me, I asked for a loan. Not like I was robbing him. He wasn't like this the other times. Finally showing his true self, huh? 
Fine, I don't need an unsupportive boyfriend. Anyone that stands between me and my happiness can get lost. So, we're over. Whatever. But wait, I still need to come inside. As Kyra's bestie, not as your girlfriend. You might be wondering what kind of relationships I have going on here. Well, I actually befriended Kyra first. We were both ecstatic. Fandom of the statics. If you know, you know. Fangirl's bond is stronger than any friendship. Her mom works for a big press, so she sometimes could even get us access to shows. Cool, right? So I was always around her place. One thing led to another. Me and her brother fell in stupid love, but not anymore. Have you heard about Aaron's new album? Apparently, it will be followed by a group concert right downtown New York. We can ask Kirk to give us a ride. It will be super fun. Oh, don't want to burst your bubble, but I just broke up with Kirk. Four minutes, 36 seconds ago? No way! Yes way! I told her how ridiculous her brother was, but she's still trying to find excuses for him, hoping to mend us back together. But sorry, this heart of mine has casted the dice. It's entirely dedicated to Aaron now. No more, dumb boyfriend. And that's how I ended up taking on this dangerous job. Its high salary could get me boxes of albums, and a concert ticket even. But what am I getting instead? My beloved idol, arms in arms with a singer I hate the most on earth, Bianca. Aaron and Bianca rushed to the window and dragged me inside. Please don't let anyone know this. What do you want? Autograph? VIP ticket? Please, you probably know our two fandoms are like water and oil. They already opposed us so badly over a collab last time. Yeah, of course I know, because I was the one who opposed. Seriously, what does Erin see in this girl? She always says controversial stuff, gets caught in dating rumors with all guys on Earth, parties 24-7, and her songs suck. But on a second thought, it's not every day to have the two hottest celebrities on their knees before me like this. Maybe I should act wisely. Either way, this is the lifetime opportunity for me stepping into Erin's life, isn't it? Okay, I'll keep a secret on one condition. Let me be the manager of Bianca. Bianca's manager? Who's looking for me? Wait, who are you? But he didn't even bother to wait for my answer and started stacking out bunches of stuff for Bianca to sign. Being a manager ain't a joke. See, Will's been doing this for years and still struggling. Well then, more reason for me to step in. So I walked over to give him a hand. This poster is mid. Next time, let me handle it. Trust me, I've designed countless stuff for fan events. The title track this time is a bop, but without a good promotion, it turned into a flop. I suggest you make some TikTok challenge for it. I'm a girl Bianca's age. I for sure understand her and the fans more than you. I'll be useful. Right, guys? Y yeah sure. She has a point, Will. You do need an assistant. Right then, Will had a phone call. Seemed urgent. After hanging up, he turned to me. Fine. It's true that I'm overloaded. I have to check stuff at the venue right now, but Bianca has schedules at the radio station in an hour. Can you get her there? Sir, yes, sir. Just like that, I helped Will around, and it's safe to say I was basically Bianca's sub-manager. Life was pretty sweet. I got to tag along to shows for free while keeping an eye on my love rival. I sure enjoyed playing God with my new puppet. Everything Bianca eats has to get my approval. Bye-bye, yummy tacos and burgers. She's only allowed to use the phone at certain times of the day. Stop texting boys and start working on your terrible music, honey. Then tell those annoying boys to stop bothering me. Even her sleep is strictly fixed, just because I love seeing her suffer. <laughs> And I make sure her schedule is packed. Vocal training, dance practice, filming content. Girl, you have a lot to work on. But on days where she worked with aesthetics, I'd let her off a little. Still, that doesn't mean these two could flirt under my nose. Seriously, it's like you guys are begging to get caught. Think about your future. This dumb fling won't matter a bit the day your career is on the edge of failing, won't it? <laughs> I'd make a good manager, right? But I occasionally saw Liam, another member of Statics, being way too chatty with Bianca. Well, as long as it's not my Aaron. But I know someone who wouldn't like this. Kyra, as Liam's her bias. <laughs> I guess the rumors are true. Liam is a playboy. And to prevent Aaron from getting caught in the same thing, I accidentally arranged Bianca's schedule to be 100% off with Aaron's, so they couldn't meet up. But Bianca still asked me to bring him gifts often, and surprisingly, Aaron wasn't too upset about his girlfriend not showing up. I guess I can get him in another level that Bianca couldn't. We soon talk a lot and hang out also, and he literally blurted out about how Bianca was so uptight, how some of her annoying habits gave him the ick, and that being with me was so much more comfortable. Uh-oh, sounds like love's fading.
<laughs> on the other hand, Bianca was extra upset that they still couldn't date on their anniversary. Not on me, though. Aaron himself didn't want to see her and made excuses about how paparazzi had been up on his grill because he's been doing so well lately. But Bianca has had enough with this all. She wanted to go public. I heard her talking to Aaron on the phone about it. No, that's not gonna happen. I have to be a step ahead. I immediately searched for a photo, then posted it anonymously on a fan forum. If Aaron goes public with anyone, it's gotta be me. But oh boy, maybe I've not thought this through. What was I even thinking? The next day, the internet went crazy and it's all negative comments. Thankfully, Aaron's side has spoken up and calmed it down by fabricating a story about how this was from a long time ago. And it was his first love, blah, blah. Anything, as long as things go down. I haven't even finished my sigh of relief. Then, out of nowhere, Aaron's stomping into our studio looking furious. R.I.P. me. Bianca, have you lost your mind? I told you I did not agree. Why did you post our photo? Are you trying to sabotage me? Sorry that you don't have a career so you can act careless all you want. But I do. I have my reputation and an army of stupid fangirls to please. I was frozen, as well as Bianca. Right then, a call came from Kyra. I swiftly sneaked out to take it. It's you, right? The lucky girl in the photo? I can tell by just one look. Last time we talked, you only mentioned seeing Bianca in real life or something. When did Aaron come into the picture? How could you not tell me? I was dumbfounded, didn't know how to handle this. I mumbled out a few words so Kyra would keep this a secret and that we'd talk later. Okay, gotcha. But then help me meet my Liam, please. What? No, trust me, he's a player. They all are. Get over him. So Kyra recognized me that easily. But why Aaron didn't? He even mistook me with his so-called girlfriend, Bianca. That picture was also taken at the secret balcony of his penthouse that he swore he'd never taken anyone there before. Having too much on my mind, I wandered to his place, but ran into... Liam? He's talking to a girl. She wiped her tears, then left. I should get going. Don't want to mess with another player right now. Harper. What? Don't worry, I won't tell anyone about that 400th girlfriend of yours. Correct, it's the 400th girlfriend, but not of mine. Turns out, that girl's also a victim of Aaron the Heartbreaker. Not Liam. Liam has always been the one who's cleaning after his mess, making sure the girls are alright and won't do anything harmful to the band's reputation. Probably that's why the public labeled me as the player. I always got caught up with these heartbroken girls. <laughs> and now you... What do you mean? I'm okay. Come on, I know you also got tangled in Aaron's love web. I'm sorry, I could have warned you earlier. I've been trying to hint it to Bianca, but the girl was too head over heels for him. I felt so stupid for thinking I could live that fantasy of being Aaron's girl so easily. All this time, we all blindly put Aaron on a pedestal, while letting Liam be wrongly accused of all the things he never did. Through Liam, I found out that the Statics has been having a problem. Aaron wanted to leave the group because he thought they're a burden and he'd do better on his own, but the rest knew that it would break the fans' hard if one of them left, so they've compromised by letting Aaron have a solo album while still staying with a group. Oh no, kick that jerk out now. As a representative of Ecstatic, I can assure you that we won't be sad if we know what an awful person he is. We'll show him the door. Glad to hear that. Now, about Bianca, do you know how to break this to her in the best way? It's hard, but ugly truth is the only way. So the next day, we went to see Bianca together, told her all about how much of a jerk Aaron is, all the girls he's been seeing, all the bad-mouthing about her, he said. Surprisingly, she took it better than we thought. Thank you, too, for looking out for me. I know, I know he's bad, but I thought I'd been able to change him. But yesterday, when he came throwing a fit at me, I realized that I deserved better. Oh, poor Bianca. I really owe her a zillion apologies. I asked Liam to give us a minute and came clean to her on everything. On the photo I posted, on how I intentionally got in between the relationship, on my dumb rules just to get the better of her. I'm truly sorry. I'm just a Tolulu fangirl after all. I'm really sad to hear that because at some point I did consider you a friend, especially your ridiculous roles. It helped me a lot. Look, you kept me on a strict diet, helped me get a healthy sleep schedule, made me practice more, stay off my phone, no more doom scrolling and obsessing over hateful comments. I can assure that you've helped me become a better artist and human overall, even though it's by accident. You are seriously too nice. How come I spent all these years hating on you? I'm sorry, and I don't think I should be around here anymore. I'd better go back to my normal life. Take care, Bianca. Bianca gave me a tight hug and said that she hoped I'd still come to her concert next week, as she'd perform the dance number we created together. 
Mm-hmm. Liam was nice enough to accompany me to Bianca's concert. I did ask Kyra if she wanted to come along, but she was all cranky. Bianca's concert? Are you an ecstatic anymore, Harper? She's our enemy. <laughs> kiddo. If only she could see past the hate. She could have met her Liam now. The show was going on smoothly. Bianca perfected our dance routine. I was so proud. But as she went to get ready for the next song, a strange VCR got played. I'm a selfish fanatic. A friend's betrayal. A gold digger. A delulu. And on screen were pictures of me. No! Is this why Bianca insisted I come? Is this her paying back? Or is this Aaron's? Or Liam's? Suddenly, Bianca on the mic snapped me out of the panic attack. Uh, <clears throat> And I'm all the worst things without your love. Ladies and gentlemen, your favorite track for my second album, Here's Without You. Everyone cheered loudly, but a voice behind me took me aback. No, guys, that's not what the video is about. The lunatic is here. This one, her- Oh my god, Liam, I- Liam quickly shushed her and we dragged her outside. Turned out my dearest sister from another mother did this to me. Why? I hate you. I know everything now. Don't forget who I am. Nothing in this fandom could be hidden from me. You got to befriend the boys, but ghosted me because you want them all to yourself, huh? After everything we've been through, all the shows my mom helped you get in, you bewitched Aaron, sided with Bianca, then called my Liam a player. But look who you're with now. On top of that, you dumped my brother for a stupid reason. The player here is you. This is a mess, and it's really my fault. I should have filled Kyra in on everything sooner. Seeing her right now reminds me of the exact same person I was just last week. The same hot-headed, immature fan. I couldn't blame her. I apologized and told her everything. And with her dearest Liam's help, Kyra, though still mad, started to be more understanding. I love you, and I hope you will soon see things the way I do now. Idols are also humans. They're not all glitters and gold. So we can't expect them to be all perfect, then refuse to see their wrongdoings. Or nitpicking trivial things just because it's not up to our expectations. Let's both be a better ecstatic from now, okay? It's been six months since then. I can say that things are definitely for the better now. It's the first performance of the static since they parted ways with Aaron after his real face got exposed. Yes, that happened. Now look, it seems like the crowd has no problem with dumping that troublemaker either. And me? Normally I'd be here as an ecstatic, but not today. I'm now working part-time while studying to get proper certification on talent management. I realized that I did enjoy working with Bianca, and I actually had a knack for it. So I'm going to make a career out of it. Now, excuse me, guys. May I get my manager back? It's showtime. Bye! Hi, guys. I'm Mia, a princess from, uh, of course, not the kingdom of far, far away, but another relatively small country in Europe, which must not be named. That was a Harry Potter reference, in case you didn't notice. Anyway, before I tell you my amazing story, like and subscribe, please? Nah, that's an order. Your Royal Highness, please come down here. In your dreams. Guys, just admit it. You've also dreamed of being able to fly far away with lots of balloons. At least once, right? I'm living your dream right now. But just as I was enjoying the fresh air, actually, the air was kind of thin up here. Anyway, out of nowhere, a flock of birds from the opposite direction flew straight into the balloons. One, then two, then three popped. Catch the princess. No, 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 no. I cannot die like this. Ah! So, at my funeral... Just kidding! Did you seriously think I died? I didn't, but instead I was immediately taken to the palace in front of the king and mom, who wasn't very happy with what I just did. How could you do something reckless like that? Did you forget who you are? Your majesty, please reprimand her properly so she would not repeat this sort of behavior. <clears throat> That's right. How could you be so careless? Next time prepare more balloons, or at least let me join you. Your majesty! <laughs> you all know who sides with who now. Growing up, Dad would let me join him in his hunting adventures, but we actually never hunted anything. <laughs> Instead, we would explore the beautiful sceneries together and learn interesting survival tricks. Those hunting trips called the deepest passion for adventures inside me. But of course, Mom only wanted to keep me inside the palace. It's too dangerous. Mia, remember who you are, or what's your manners? But I couldn't care less about her because Dad always got my back. <laughs> But everything changed when I was 15. Dad suddenly had a stroke, then fell into a coma. Mom ascended the throne, and my life officially became hell on earth. I'm not even blowing it up. I was not allowed to laugh out loud, eat too much, or even leave the palace anymore. She was so paranoid that she even insisted I have a bodyguard. 
One day, I was reading a book when the sleepy monster came to visit me. So I asked my bodyguard to play my favorite game with me. Let's take turns naming words starting with the letter B. Whoever loses will have to do a handstand walk around the palace. I'll go first. Bite. After a few rounds back and forth, we started running out of words starting with B. I, I have a word, but I can't say it. Oh, come on. Say it or I'll have you fired. B -b 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 but right then, mom came in out of nowhere and immediately fired him just because of using improper language. What choice do I have, really? I tried to negotiate with mom to let it slide, but she was impossible. So I had another bodyguard who just moved here from the North Pole. Negotiation wasn't even in his dictionary. One time, I wanted to try this Peter Parker battery experiment, but knowing my bodyguard would never allow it, I asked him to go buy me a chocolate shake. So here I am, ready to become the next Spider-Man. Warning, do not try this at home. Yeah, I'm talking to you all. So anyway, the experiment was quite successful, but my new bodyguard was also fired shortly after. He didn't even know I was doing this. It was my fault this time, Mom. Mom! Then, after a short while of many other recruitments and reconsiderations, the queen finally found another bodyguard who, according to her, <clears throat> had given up her noble position in the royal family to train in the army. You will learn a lot from her, yada yada yada. Does her name happen to be Mulan too? But the moment I met my new bodyguard, I thought she was Miss Universe in disguise. Skin as white as snow, lips red as the rose, and hair black as ebony. Hmm? She looked as fragile as Snow White. How is she meant to protect me? I guess I have to test her then. Come at me already. Before I could process, she rushed towards me faster than the speed of light, and I instantly found myself locked in. Your Royal Highness, I'm Grace. I'll be your bodyguard from now on. G got it. Now could you release me? I was finally freed from her grip. So, Lady Grace, is it true you gave up your title to train in the army? That is true, Your Royal Highness. Just call me Mia. Anyway, why did you do that? I just wanted to follow my martial arts dreams without any restrictions. Grace and I talked some more, and I found out she was actually very pleasant to be with. Over time, Grace and I became closer. She was excellent at her job, protecting me from any trouble I caused for myself. But whenever she could, she would also try to bring me along with her on palace duties. She knew how much I loved to be outside the palace. Everything was better with Grace, until one day after I turned 17, the Queen summoned me in to announce a life-altering news. According to the Royal Covenant, as soon as a princess turns 17, her engagement ceremony is to be held. What? Engagement? There's no way I'll get married at the age of 17 or 18. And should I at least know the name of the unlucky guy? Right then, a guy stepped in. Nice meeting you again, princess. Liam, the duke from a neighboring country? I met him before through some royal parties. Oh gosh, he smelled like he just soaked himself in 1,001 bottles of Dior Sauvage. I mean, look at the way he stroked his hair or applied chapstick. My stomach was literally on strike seeing all of this. Ugh! No, I will not marry anyone. If you guys insist, I... I'll... Go on a hunger strike! Only, I didn't know hunger strikes require a great deal of mental strength, which I don't have. After skipping lunch, I almost passed out already. Luckily, Grace sneaked in some food for me. Thank you, thank you. There's no way I'm going to skip my 2 p.m. chocolate shake either. I understand what you mean, your highness. It's all because of that stupid Liam guy. Did you see how he acted? He looked like a donkey. Actually, I used to attend some royal classes with the Duke before I gave up royalty. Oh yeah? I bet he failed all the classes. There was no grace in that man. No, he was actually very smart. And he cares a lot about others. You know, a lot of girls in the classes were dying to get with him. So maybe you should just give him some time, your highness. All right, as long as you get me my chocolate shake. It seemed like the hunger strike really worked, since the next day the queen came into my room looking all worried. Mia, have you seriously not been eating? He yes Mom, I can't, I can't get ma married. Right then, Marcus, Mom's private secretary, came in, interrupting my marvelous acting. Your Majesty, please consider joining the charity program in the southern village. I said I will not go! But I'm afraid since the king became unconscious, the royal reputation hasn't been as good as it used to be. Having a member of the royal family there would help. Ooh, a charity program in the southern village? This screams my ticket to freedom. If I go, I could at least delay the stupid marriage. Plus, I'll get to explore the village. Your Majesty, perhaps you could allow me to join the charity program on behalf of the royal family? That is too risky. Actually, having the princess there would also help promote her image as well, given that she is the next in line to the throne. But... Mom, <coughs> this is the only way to lift my gloomy, dying spirits. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mom. 
This is what a high IQ will get you in life. It seemed like the engagement ceremony with Liam would have to wait, because I, the princess, am setting off to save the world. <laughs> but man proposes, God disposes. When I arrived there, everything was really programmed. Everyone was dressed up, holding flower bouquets, and standing on both sides of the road welcoming me. As soon as they saw me, they all started applauding. I haven't even done anything praiseworthy. Oh wait, should I smile or should I grin? How many teeth should be revealed? Oops, I forgot to check myself in the mirror this morning. Is there any lipstick or veggie stuck on my teeth for breakfast? Suddenly, I noticed a boy with a bouquet of deep red roses looking at me curiously. Are those for me? Thank you very much! No? <laughs> I guess they're for your mom then! I patted him on the head, stopped to all these behind-the-scenes bloopers. As I continued walking, I saw a well-groomed gentleman wearing a hat in front of me. Did the locals here even prepare a moonwalk performance to welcome me? That's so thoughtful! But as I was about to approach, he reached out to stop me, and lifted his hat, revealing a cheesy smile. Wait a second, I think I had seen that smile somewhere else before. Bonjour, Principessa. Here we meet again. L Liam? Why are you here? I don't know if you've heard it before, but there's a Chinese proverb that says, If it be fated, even a thousand miles cannot keep us apart. Ugh, I've come all the way here and still can't seem to escape this guy. I'm sure mom was behind this. <laughs> so you must also know the other saying in Chinese, But if it not be fated, we shall not encounter each other, even if we are face to face. Even after I literally spelled out, I do not wish to see your face like that, he still didn't bat an eye and continued acting cheesy. He even messed around with Grace, too, making her all embarrassed. I had to save her out of there. Just ignore him. I thought upon coming here, I would be free to wander around to explore the surroundings and meet up with new people, but... Without the Queen's approval, your highness is not allowed to go out. Then for food, we were served with all different kinds of exquisite cuisines. So, are we doing charity or on a vacation? Yeah, right. How can the two of us finish all this food by ourselves? You should join us too. That's right. Everyone come join us. W we can't, your highness. Okay, either you all sit down or I'll have you fired. That's the power of being a princess. So, turned out life here was no different from back at the palace. I had to participate in loads of charity duties that didn't have anything to do with charity at all. Worse still, I couldn't even enjoy my snooze privilege anymore. Rise and shine, princess. Today's schedule begins with breakfast at 7 a.m., accompanied by the Duke, followed by an interview with reporters at 8 a.m. At 10.30, your highness and the Duke will deliver gifts to residents of the lodge and take photos with the president and first lady of France. Then at 11.30... All right, all right, at least let me go squeeze the cheese first. No, princess, we don't have any cheese for today's breakfast. If I'm not mistaken, the breakfast menu includes... No, Grace, I mean, I gotta go bake a loaf, uh, plant some corn, uh, I need to go to the bathroom ASAP. Well, breakfast was ruined because of Liam. If it wasn't for Grace, I would have jumped over and torn him apart already. But now, I still have to endure this terrible human being's company for the interview. Let's take a beautiful photo of the princess and the duke together. I angrily looked into the camera while Liam grinned stupidly. Ugh, you guys just want nice pictures of me and Liam? I immediately posed in 101 different positions. Everyone's face went from surprised to confused to speechless. P princess my shirtlift spotlight was suddenly taken when Liam also started crawling on the ground and posing like a Zara model. Hey, what are you waiting for? Take as many photos as you want. D did he really go that far? After a whole day of taking photos and interviews and being pretty and breathing, I was exhausted. But I still need to attend this dinner with the president and the first lady of France. I tried to follow along with the conversation, but soon, all the laughter and chatter around me slowly faded away. Then I suddenly saw myself turning into a rabbit running free around the carrot field, hanging out with my turtle friend. As I turned around to look for him, a farmer suddenly appeared and lifted me up. Ah! Turned out the farmer was Grace. <laughs> oh? Did I say something funny? Ahem. <clears throat> right when I was staring daggers at Liam, he suddenly turned serious. Please excuse me. I suffer from a condition called laugh a lot from a young age. What is laugh a lot? How come I have never heard of it? Oh, only about 0.01% of the population suffers from this, so it's not common. People with laugh a lot syndrome have no control over their mouth and jaw muscles, or when to laugh. Oh, I understand. I'm so sorry about that. You're still so young. I tried so hard to hold back my laughter. How could the first lady not figure out Liam was just messing with her? <laughs> It's been a few days, and all I did was eat, sleep, and take pictures. I've had enough! One morning, I called Grayson. The past couple of days have been exhausting, and I've not been feeling well. I'm just gonna rest today. Don't let anyone disturb me. I understand, your highness. Ah, <sighs> huh. I should have done this sooner. 
The front gate was heavily guarded, so I had to sneak out from the backyard. But why was this wall so high? I was about to climb the wall when suddenly I heard a rustling sound below. Huh? A dog hole? Man, I'm in this too deep already, there's no going back. I tried to squeeze through, but I might have had a little too much food for breakfast. Uh, come on, you got this! Phew! Finally, I took a deep breath. <sighs> so this is what freedom smells like. I followed the road ahead and soon saw a village in the distance. I excitedly skipped towards it, but I suddenly stepped on something that I hope was not man-made. Well, it wasn't man-made, but horse-made. When I was figuring out what to do next, someone passed by. He was tall and handsome, just like a male character walking straight out of a Japanese manga. But why does it have to be in this embarrassing situation? I was at a bustling party, waiting for the one who would decide whether I'd won my cousin's bet or not. Forget your dumb ex. Fifty bucks if you get the number of the next guy walking through that door. Oh, here comes my target. I hurriedly approached him, but stumbled and we're kissing. I could feel the taste of grapes on his lips. I immediately pushed him away and stood up. Uh, f phone number, please. The guy looked confused, but still handed me a note. All done. Time to flee the scene. Hi, I'm Agatha, a super introvert who hiccups when nervous. And lucky enough, my kooky cousin dragged me to this crazy party. I ran home to see Mum looking all excited. Oh, my sweet child, you're back already. It's just not my thing, Mom. But cooking is. I have some amazing news. The local soccer club is looking for a chef, so I recommended you. And guess what? They said you can start ASAP. Yes, I've dreamt of becoming a chef since I was little. And now that dream will soon come true. Yahoo! Today's the day. I eagerly arrived at the soccer club, but my jaw almost hit the floor when I saw Mateo, my ex. What was he doing here? Flustered, I looked away and saw that guy from the party. What on earth? My life's officially over. After the introduction, I immediately ran to the pitch for some fresh air. But then a hand patted my shoulder. It's him again. No calls or texts? You asked for my number. Are you that shy? <laughs> I'm Killian, by the way. It, it was just a joke. I... Please leave. But then he stepped even closer. Panicked, I pushed him away. Almost made him fall backward. I tried to catch him, but... Not again. This time he smells like chocolate. Oh, you like my lips this much? Why not just say so? <gasps> Holy moly! I ran straight away without looking back. I better stay ten miles away from him. Suddenly I saw Mateo passing by. Has he seen anything? But why bother? As if he cared. He dumped me. Okay, Agatha, you're here to work, so focus. But with these jocks around, it's not that easy. They always jump-scared me when I was doing my job and made fun of me when I got lost in the changing room. And Killian was always there in time to save me. Everyone, stop. Close your eyes. Then he threw a super stinky, sweaty towel at my face. Ew. Plus, that jerk is the pickiest eater on this planet. He's constantly complaining about my food and demanded I cook him something else. There you go. I'm cutting on starch to build muscles. I'll get rid of the pasta. Oops, I forgot. I'm lactose intolerant. Okay, no cheese. Poor little chicken. I can't eat that. So, are you allergic to the plate too? Meanwhile, other team members were way easier. Especially Mateo. We used to date, so I knew his taste pretty well. I gave you some extra pork. Your favorite. I don't like pork. I hate pigs. Just then, Killian jumped in. You should focus on me instead. We can discuss my meals privately. Before I could say anything, he already handed me a note. Me and him alone? That's weird. But learning his eating habit would help my job, right? Nope. Big mistake. Killian had an endlessly absurd list of diet restrictions. No more than 2.5 grams of salt a day, mayonnaise on everything, no mushrooms, and spaghetti without tomato sauce? Did he just descend onto Earth? And during the meal, this dude kept smiling and staring at me. You like me or something? You have a veggie on your teeth. Dude! Oh, gosh! I immediately ran to the restroom, but Killian caught up with me, holding a ball of wool. Is this yours? I looked down to see a wool thread coming out of my dress's hemline. Ah! Oh, gosh. I wish the ground just swallowed me whole right now. Surprisingly, Killian put his jacket on me. That was cool. 
Just then he caught me drooling over him, so I immediately pretended to play with my phone. <laughs> I just want to beat level 9,674 in Candy Crush. Strangely, over the next few days, Mateo started being nice to me. Too nice. Your cooking is top-notch as always. Tomorrow, can you make me those delicious vegetable fritters we used to have together? He still remembered that? Boy, he made my heart race. I sprinted to the kitchen and put on music to calm down. Soon, I found myself singing and dancing to my jam. I promise that you'll never find another like me. He he! Ooh, 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 ooh! Mamma mia! How long had he been there? Flustered, I burnt myself. Killian rushed over and held my hand. You okay? You can't even handle yourself? Then he insisted on finishing my work and even prepared us a dish. Wah, his broad back. Isn't he quite a charmer when he cooks? We talked a lot, and turns out, we share a ton of things in common. Beneath his teasing, he's actually gentle, caring, and a good listener. I suddenly realized that I had stopped hiccuping since ages. One afternoon, while giving out water, I saw Killian. Oh wow, it's like the sunshine drew a halo around him in his exquisite face. Wait a minute, why was I smiling? Suddenly, a fancy-looking girl came over. Killian, why didn't you reply to my messages? You left me hanging all night! Look, I have dark circles now. That's on you. I went to leave, but out of nowhere, Mateo pulled me into a corner. Why were you so close to him? He's only messing with me. Huh? What do you mean? He competes with me in everything. I was cold to you to protect you. Now that he knows you're important to me, he'll harm you to hurt me. I think he's just trying to be nice. His dad is our club's biggest sponsor. You really think he wants to hang out with people like us while Sloane, whose family owns the largest hospital in the state, is here? I don't know what to believe anymore. However, I had to admit they looked like a perfect couple. While holding a coffee tray one time, I clumsily bumped into Sloane. Are you blind? Why do they let a doofus work here? Come on, Sloane, you bumped into her. He sure seemed sweet to me. Maybe Mateo had misunderstood him. Then once, I spotted the two of them in a quarrel where Killian even pushed Mateo. I tried to intervene, but they brushed me off. What was going on between them? A few days later, I returned from the grocery store to see the head coach in a fit of rage. Explain to me how Mateo is hospitalized for eating your food. What? Why? Stop it! You're fired! My head spun in a million circles. I hadn't done anything wrong. I was packing my things when Sloane appeared. Well, well, well. Looks like little Miss Muffet met her match. Only need some simple tricks to get rid of you and your phony, needy act. Stop dreaming about Killian. You're not at our level. Wait, our? Who's with you? But Sloane just smirked and strutted away. That's when the memory of Killian and Matteo fighting struck my mind. So, Killian must have conspired with Sloane to harm Matteo and ruin my career in the process? How could he? Still, he had the cheek to text me as if nothing had happened. Dummy, Agatha. You should have listened to Mateo from the start and stayed away from Killian. I visited Mateo in the hospital, but he coldly shooed me away. It was exactly like the day he dumped me. Today is the city's championship final, and to be honest, I didn't really know why I was here. I looked around for Mateo, but couldn't find him. He might still be sick, so we had to skip this match. On the field, Killian seemed distracted and off his game. What's wrong with him today? Killian, my dear. The lady sitting next to me looked nervous and kept fidgeting. I spoke to her and figured out she was Killian's mom. She told me the shocking news. His little sister was missing. He was blackmailed into making their team lose or he'd never see his sister again. Killian faced the goal, but he didn't kick. Instead, he passed to another player who then scored the goal. The spectators cheered in triumph, while other players celebrated the goal with Killian. Blood seemed to have drained from his face. As predicted, the threats kept coming. I couldn't just sit and pray, so I asked Killian's mom for more clues. She played me the recording of her daughter. I strained my ears to listen and heard a noise. Peekaboo! Peekaboo! I know that sound. It's Mateo's parrot! Ma'am, I know who's behind this. It's Mateo! What? I can excuse fake food poisoning, but how dare he harm my Killian? Ugh, say it again, Sloan. He asked me to fake the medical paper, and I figured it would also kick you out, so I agreed. But what about Killian's sister? That was nothing to do with me, I swear. We rushed to Mateo's house. It took him forever to open the door. Mateo, 
Are you okay now? I, I have thought a lot about us and realized how important you are to me. And I don't want to lose you again. Mateo, could you? Oh, please. Look at yourself. I just dated you for fun. You truly think I like you? <laughs> and no more pork for me, please. Do you seriously think I'd want you back after the despicable things you did to me and Killian? Killian? Props to that freak for coming at me for telling the truth. So pathetic of him to go for my leftovers. It's you, dummy. Then he blurted out how he cooked up this entire scheme to ruin Killian's career out of the jealousy which was triggered when he visited him in the hospital and told him not to worry about missing the match as they've had a new strategy to cover his absence and the team would perform well anyway. I'm not a pawn that can easily be kicked out. You wish. You are pathetic. Right then, Sloane appeared with the little girl. Let's go. There's no time. Where are you going, Agatha? Admit it. You're still smitten with me. Sorry, the old Agatha can't come to the phone right now. Why? Oh, because she's dead. After that, we rushed to the stadium. There, I shouted out Killian's name and raised his sister's hands. He seemed surprised to see us, then nodded and smiled. Afterwards, he played like a pro and led his team to victory. He was even awarded player of the match. It's an honor to receive this title, and I want to shout out to someone important. Without her, this wouldn't have happened. Agatha, thank you so much. Countless cameras turned to me. Then he rushed over to drag me to a corner where I told him everything. I know Mateo's a jerk, but I didn't expect him to be that bad. But no worries. Let's see how he likes being permanently banned from the soccer club. Agatha, I, um, want to tell you that I found something just as important as soccer. You. He then grabbed my face and pressed his lips against mine. Finally. We had a legit kiss, and it was magical. Hey, I'm Sage, but you can call me Witch. That's what all the townspeople call me anyway. My folks run a funeral home called Black Rose, and some superstitious people consider this a bad omen. By some, I mean the entire town. Everything about us is spooky and weird. Want to see our house? It kinda has that monster house vibe, and looks like a fort in the middle of this dollhouse neighborhood. I did try making friends with the other kids, but it never worked out. Ah! Don't eat the cookies! They're poisoned! Despite all that, Mom and Dad found their work meaningful and put a lot of effort into it. Well, maybe a little too much? I guess the reason why they're so emotional is because they know what it feels like to lose someone dear to them. My little sister Leah's missing, and it's all my fault. We'd searched for her everywhere for five years but still, no news. It was a terrible time for my family, but instead of showing us support, the neighbors spread absurd rumors about Leah's disappearance. Some said the devil took her, while others said we sacrificed her during a satanic ritual. These heartless people were never going to change their minds about us, so I decided to just go along with it. This is why no one dares to bother me, as they don't want to be cursed- Ouch! Oh, sorry, miss. We're just trying to catch that bird. Please don't curse us. Jesus, that poor little thing. If you hurt an innocent creature again, I'll turn you into one and see how you like having stones shot at you. Blood drained immediately from their faces as they screamed and bolted. I carefully took the bird out of the bush, then brought it to my forest house. This is my secret hideout deep in the forest. I have my own garden where I plant herbs to heal injured animals. This isn't a wild bird. It even has a name. Must be someone's pet. Okay, Sky. so you like to sneak out, huh? The world out there is dangerous. I should bring you home. I followed the address on Skye's tag and took her there. Guess her owner wouldn't be happy if they thought a witch had cursed her, so it's better not to show myself. No one wants anything to do with a witch. But no matter how annoyed or scared they acted, I just don't care. Having the place to myself has its perks. But then out of the blue, a guy slumped on the chair opposite me. How dare he? I could feel his eyes peeking at me. Another idiot wanting to test his courage. Hey, Sage, right? We're in the same English literature class. But in case you didn't know, I'm Mark. Why should I know your name? Oh, I... I just wanted to... If you don't want to get diarrhea, sleep paralysis, or skin rashes, don't ever talk to me. Then I turned around to leave, but tripped over something and fell forward. You alright? This is crazy. Who asked him to do that? Then I came home to find an angry crowd in front of my house. Those eerie sounds are keeping us awake at night. What kind of dark magic are you practicing? 
Your black sorcery made my curling iron overheat and burn my hair. Must be some demonic influence messing around here. Turns out, strange things were happening to every house in the neighborhood. So these superstitious people blamed everything on my family and even wanted to kick us out. We can't move. We have to wait here. For Leah. She's with the devil now. She's obviously not coming back. So go away. Never talk about my sister like that again. Get out of here. Coincidentally, there was a loud rumble of thunder right at that moment. Horrified, they started pointing and calling me a witch. Go home, everyone, for your own safety. I'll take it from here. This man is Mr. Thompson, the town's mayor. He came with an offer to help our family move away in peace. Believe me, it's best for everyone. If and when your daughter comes back, you'll be informed right away. After he left, my parents seemed to be thinking about moving away for real. What's gotten into them? We didn't do anything wrong. Why do we have to leave? I'm not going anywhere. My parents might be weak, but I'm not. I'll wait for my sister here. She promised me she'd help me care for those poor creatures. She will be back. Achoo! What was that? It sounds like a guy's sneeze. Who's there? Show yourself. Ugh, you idiot. Come out alone. Both of you. Now. Those two look familiar. Right, they're Meg and Nick, the infamous best friend duo in my school. It turns out, they were curious about the strange phenomena happening at Meg's house too. They wanted to see if I was really using witchcraft to cause all that. We didn't expect to see you healing animals here. Why do you let people think you're a witch? They can call me a witch, an alien, or whatever. I don't care, as long as they leave me be. I hate it when people annoy me, which is what you two are doing now. Quit following me and never come here again but they didn't leave. Instead, Meg told me about a black rose that always appeared at the scene. Of course, it reminds the townsfolk of my family. Nick thought that made no sense. I mean, if it really was us, why would we make it that obvious? Hmm, someone's clearly trying to frame us. That's it. If I found that person, my family could live here in peace again. We'll investigate together. We can catch the bad guy and be heroes, like a detective squad. Sounds like you've been watching too much Scooby-Doo. And why aren't you guys scared of me? Actually, I'd make a great Daphne. And come on, we just saw you feeding the cats. Even if you are a witch, then you must be a kind one. The next day, I was going downstairs when I heard some chattering noise. Are those angry townsfolk back? I was about to scare them away, but I saw my parents warmly welcoming Meg and Nick? This is the first time I'd had friends come over, so my parents were overreacting. I hurriedly pulled my so-called friends out of the house. I guess disturbing me has become a habit to you, huh? We didn't know how else to contact you. Anyway, we'd like to introduce you to an IT expert. He's agreed to help us. Then suddenly, a guy standing behind the black rose bush appeared and said hi to me. Isn't that the guy from the library? This is Mark, the newest member of our squad. Good to see you again. I hope you'll remember my name this time. So, this Mark guy was really serious about this. He's now telling Nick how he could get data from all of the cameras in the neighborhood, which sounded like some kind of alien language to me. Look, our tech genius found something. Mark is awesome, right, Sage? Um, I guess? Um, someone hacked into these houses' networks and was causing their electrical appliances to go haywire. And every night at 11 o'clock sharp, the camera would be disconnected. Not for long, just enough for someone to place a black rose at the scene unnoticed. Can you track down that hacker's IP address? Yes, and also their coordinates. That's Clara's house? Wait, Clara? The drama queen who always plays up everything about me? Does she hate me that much to target my whole family? We reached out to Clara to talk privately, but she flat out denied everything. What is wrong with you? Did this witch hypnotize you into becoming her slave? Blink twice if you need help. <laughs> we have proof. You can't get away with this. Are you threatening me? This is illegal. I will tell my father about this. You think you're a big deal just because your father is the mayor? Big enough for you to watch out. She's the mayor's daughter? What's with that smug attitude? Everyone in this school remembers how she embarrassed herself last year after Mark rejected her. You may not know this, but Mark is the most popular guy among the girls in our school. Eh, um, it doesn't matter. I'm not interested in those girls. You don't have to explain yourself to me. I don't even care. The atmosphere suddenly became weirdly awkward. Well, now the only way is to stalk Clara and catch her red-handed. But we've been sitting here for an hour, and nothing's happened. This snooping scheme is so silly. I was about to leave when Mark stopped me. Someone was coming out of Clara's house. Gotcha. Still trying to deny it now, Clara? 
Mark took off his mask, but who's this man? He suddenly flung out, then attacked Mark and ran off. We were about to chase him when Mark cried out in pain. Meg and Nick told me to take Mark home while they chased after the guy. I brought him home. Hmm, this house looks so familiar. Oh, this was the owner's house of Skye, the bird I'd saved. Mark explained he'd seen me bring Skye back and was impressed with the note I'd left on how to take care of its wound. I knew everyone had been wrong about you, so I wanted to thank you and be your friend. I'm not someone who could make friends. Then I quickly left. The next day, Mark helped us arrange a meeting with Clara at the cafe where he worked. When Clara heard about the man coming out of her house last night, she seemed shaken and said he was probably one of her dad's staff. However, when Meg asked her for her help, Clara refused. We hit a dead end again, but Mark said he already had a solution. Before he could tell us, the cafe owner appeared and told me that spooky stuff was happening and asked me to leave. The holy statue, the town's symbol, was broken, and they found another black rose at the scene. Meg and Nick immediately jumped to my defense, but he didn't listen. He also forbade Mark from hanging out with me, or else he'd fire him. I'll leave now! See? I'm not good at making friends. I only bring them trouble. I dashed away so no one could see me cry. However, suddenly, someone's hand grabbed mine, then pulled me onto the bus just as it arrived at its stop. Mark? What are you doing? He'll fire you! I quit. That kind of boss doesn't get to fire me. It's all my fault. Don't worry. I have a ton of different jobs. Waiter, dog walker, even babysitter. Anything that makes money. What's the money for? This bus will take you to the answer. We got off at the last stop. An orphanage. So Mark was donating the money he earned to these orphans. Promise me you'll show them your true kind side. At first, I wasn't sure if I could, but then I gradually opened up to these sweet kids. Suddenly, I saw a familiar figure watching other children having fun from afar. Is that... Leah? My sister? Turns out, five years ago, a lost kid was found wandering by the bus stop. She was so scared that she couldn't remember anything about her family. She only said a few separate words like funeral or dead people, so the nuns thought her parents had passed away and took her in. During her time here, she couldn't blend in with other kids. Seeing how Leah pushes others away, I saw myself in her. She shouldn't live her life the same way I do. I then called my parents and they came to pick us up right away. Oh boy, it surely was the tearful reunion of the century. Thank you so much. We only found Leah thanks to you. I'm glad to help, but that's not all. I've got something else to show you. As it turned out, Mark bugged Clara's phone at the cafe. It recorded a call she had with her father, exposing him as the culprit behind the town's mishaps. It appears Mr. Mayor wanted to build a shopping mall, but he needed to clear up some space for it. Using my family's bad rap, he played spooky tricks on the townspeople to scare them into selling their homes for cheap. When Clara found out the truth, she begged her father to stop, but he refused to. Meg and Nick posted the recording on the internet, causing outrage among our town. The cops arrested him, and my family's name was cleared. All our neighbors apologized to my family for letting their superstitions blindside them. My parents were obviously touched, so they forgave them all, and threw a party. So, my family was reunited. Not only did I find my sister, but also three good friends. Well, maybe two good friends, and one more than just a friend. I arrived home in really good spirits after an exciting training session, and my mood took an instant nosedive to see my devious cousin Caitlin holding my diary. Oh wow, so your crush is Leo, the swimming club captain, huh? Give me it back. I wonder if the whole school knows yet. Don't worry, your devoted cousin is here to help. Thanks a lot, but I'll do it myself. Stop poking your big nose in my business. Hey, um, first, your nose is much bigger than mine. And second, about Leo, Leo, whatever. He'll be mine soon. Tit for tat. Payback for stealing my boyfriend. How ridiculous. And so not true. She should blame herself for having terrible taste in men instead. No thanks. I didn't want a player like him either. Hi, I'm Megan, the leader of the school scout club. I'm friendly, fun, and love going on adventures, just like my explorer dad. So, of course, girls like Caitlin don't scare me. From day one of my dear cousin moving in with us, it was clear we were never going to get on. 
I love to run around the garden and learn interesting survival tricks with my dad, while Caitlin can't even stand a speck of dirt. Oh my god! Billions of germs are attacking me! Get me sanitizer! Now! And it didn't help at all that Caitlin's jerk of a boyfriend asked me out right after breaking up with her. Despite my clear disinterest in him, she blamed me. That's when we were officially like Cardi B and Nicki Minaj and the prank wars began. She drew on my face in permanent marker while I slept, stuck gum in my hair, and once she even tried to shave my eyebrows. But who am I, huh? I can beat her with only one move. But now, the stakes have been raised. She's going after Leo. So I need to confess my feelings to him ASAP before Caitlin butts in and ruins it. The perfect opportunity would be the upcoming school field trip for top students, which Caitlin definitely can't join. And there will be plenty of chances for me to impress Leo. But there's one slight problem. It's by a river. OMG, thinking of it made me want to pee my pants already. <clears throat> I have thalassophobia, which is an intense fear of large bodies of water. Of course, I keep this a secret because no one will take me seriously as a scout leader if they find out about this. However, this is a once-in-a-lifetime deal, and no way can I just sit at home while Caitlin digs her claws into Leo. So, I signed up for the trip and set up a master plan for it. Baby steps. I mean, literally. I signed up for swimming in a kid-friendly pool. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Oh, but why are my legs trembling like this? Ha <laughs> ha It's not like I've morphed into a jellyfish or something. Look, the pool is turning into the scary ocean ready to swallow me! Help! Suddenly, a boy with a floaty bumped into me. I fell on my butt and my leg touched the water. Something grabbed me. Loch Ness Monster! It's eating me alive! Just then, a kid popped up and started laughing at me. It's okay, Megan. Happy thoughts. Think happy thoughts. Ah, this is much better. But then I felt splashes everywhere. I tried to avoid them but ended up toppling over and fell into the water. Panicking, I spluttered and flailed about. I couldn't care any less about everyone looking at me weirdly anymore and just screamed for dear life. Suddenly, strong arms pulled me out of the water. Then that guy carried me, and my face pressed right against his chest. Holy moly, it felt harder than a rock. You all right? Oh, my Superman. I'll be your Lois Lane. Ew, snot is streaming down your face. Disgusting. Gosh, this is so embarrassing. I got dressed at the speed of light and ran out of there. Um, hang on. Something isn't right. Hey, missing something? Jesus! This jerk still tried to embarrass me at the last minute? The only good guy in this world is my Leo! As if it's still not enough to call it a day, I came home to see Caitlin watching a scary movie about a giant shark. Sup? Scared of me already? It's not too late to cling onto my leg and beg! <laughs> Who's scared? This stupid show. It's obviously all CGI. There's no shark in the world that could be that big. <laughs> and, um, they're labeled as dangerous, indiscriminate killers that eat anything in sight. But in fact, sharks are most often the victims. Whew. My acting was not so bad, was it? Finally, the field trip participants list was published. Of course, my name was on it. And Leo, too. But wait, why is Caitlin here? She's always wrapped up with boys instead of studying and doesn't even remember the multiplication table. What? Can't accept the fact that I'm a genius too? FYI, I am super quick at math. Really? So what is 356 plus 445? Easy. 234. Huh? That's not even close. But it was quick. See you on the trip. I'll be watching you, sis. The day finally came and our tour guide is Mike, the best scout in the state. But hold on. Why does this guy look familiar? Oh no, that's the guy who saved me at the pool. Scared that he'll expose me, I didn't know what to do but to give him the stupidest smile. To my surprise, he seemed not to remember me at all. Then he asked me to demonstrate the first activity with him, vertical neck climbing. It's time for me to shine. Eyes on me, Leo. Gosh, this guy climbed like a monkey. But don't expect me to accept a loss. I was enjoying the victory when Caitlin approached me. Everyone knows that muscle power is only to make up for a tiny brain. Yeah, great shout, Megan. Use all your energy up in one go just so you can show off. Are they cut from the same cloth? Never mind. Hmm, Leo's looking at me. His eyes are so dreamy. That was even more powerful than ten cans of monster drinks. Nature Hunt, Monkey Bridge, Tarzan Rope, all these challenges didn't make me break into a sweat. And Leo even came to praise me. That's incredible, Megan. 
How can you do that? Oh, Leo, I only had an apple for breakfast, so now I'm having hypoglycemia or something. I'm so dizzy. OMG, my dear cousin should really get an Oscar nomination for her fake act. I gave my sweetest smile and helped her. Just so when Leo wasn't looking, I tripped her up and she fell face first into a muddy puddle. Leo tried to wipe it off, but ended up turning her into a monkey. Then Mike walked past and said, Wow, this layer of makeup is a big improvement. His caddish tongue seemed not to leave anyone alone. In the afternoon, I took my free time to wander around and saw a pretty bird. Hmm, I wonder what it is. That's a red-capped mannequin. Very popular in Central American forests. Wow, good knowledge. Thanks for telling me without being asked. They have a signature dance to impress their mates. Any idea? A moonwalk that rivals Michael Jackson's. <laughs> Wait, what? Why did I laugh so hard? He might be funny, but he's still a jerk. The last activity of the day was using rocks to make fire, and I was paired with Leo. Thank you, universe. I squidged up close to him and offered him a mint. He happily took it, but then suddenly turned red and started choking. I leaped into action and hit him hard on his back, making the mint fly out. Leo immediately took my hand. My guardian angel, where have you been all my life? Anyway, would you like to join me for a walk later? I have something to tell you. Yes! Ooh, I mean, sure. Where do you want to go? The riverbank. Romantic, right? <laughs> R river? I'll die there. But so what? This is my chance. If I die, I'll die under the title of Leo's girlfriend. Totally worth it. I arrived to see Leo already waiting. His skin was glistening beneath the setting sunlight. Hmm, he was like my very own Edward Cullen, but it didn't make me any less scared. Oh, you're here. You look pale. Are you sick? Oh, no. No, I'm fine. Great. Let's get on the boat to enjoy the view. I closed my eyes tightly and squeezed Leo's hand. Then Leo kept talking, but I couldn't hear anything until... Megan, I've admired you for so long. Will you be my girlfriend? I turned into the ripest tomato, but managed to blurt out, I, I love to. Gotcha! Gosh, why is Caitlin here? I was still in shock when Leo jumped out of the boat and high-fived Caitlin? Then they kissed? Surprise! Surprise! Now you know how it feels to have your dream guy stolen away. No, no, please, I, I can't stand it. The water is scaring me. Just enjoy the view, Megan. Where's that fierce girl gone? Your mom told me that you have thalassophobia, but I didn't expect it to be so real. Don't worry, I'll show this to the whole school so they'll come rescue you. Good luck, cousin. Leo and Caitlin walked off holding hands. I stayed as still as I could in the unsteady boat. The world was spinning around me, but I couldn't do anything but cry. Time went by like a decade had passed. Then I felt a pat on my shoulder. Mike stretched out his hand, then swooped me up in his arms and carried me to the lawn nearby. But how did you find me? I saw the video Caitlin just posted, then immediately went to look for you along the riverbank. Is that so? How embarrassing. He kept silent for a while, then said, You might not know this, but I used to be freaked out by heights. My acrophobia is better now, but still. No way! You nailed the climbing challenge earlier. If you want to overcome your fear, then you have to find a way to face it. Be courageous. Don't let it become a weakness for others to laugh at. Then he gave me the sweetest smile. And right at that moment, he looked kind of different to me. More attractive. That night, I shut myself away in my tent while the others gathered around the bonfire. I wasn't ready to face anyone just yet, and my mind was too restless to sleep. The next morning came the boat race. When I arrived, all judging eyes were on me. I was nervous, but soon plucked up my courage and spoke out. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan, and I have thalassophobia. So, I can't complete this challenge. I'm embarrassed. Not about my phobia, but about letting myself live in fear of it. I love being a scout leader with all my heart, so I'll try to beat this. Fear is not your enemy, it is your motivation. Then I walked off to cheering and clapping. Back at the tent, I saw Mike waiting for me. That's the spirit. You're really brave and have the qualities of a true adventurer. Even when you're not in the game, you've already won the special prize in my heart. Everything went smoothly after the field trip. Even Caitlin stopped bothering me. She must be busy being lovey-dovey with her new love. Until one day, I saw her arrive home sobbing. What happened? 
that jerk Leo, he cheated on me with two, no, three girls at the same time. Excuse me? Why is my life so miserable? I know I can never outsmart you or be as brave, as confident as you, but do I not deserve at least one nice thing? I didn't know Caitlin had this self-deprecating side. Suddenly, I felt sorry for her. She is my cousin, after all. Don't cry. I'll help you teach him a lesson. Really? Megan, I'm sorry for letting my jealousy turn me into a monster. Are we good? The next day at school, we stepped into the hallway and heard a horrified scream. It was Leo with his locker full of cockroaches. He freaked out so much that his friend had to catch him before he fell over. Oh, Leo, I am just warming up. I gathered my classmates and showed them the extra special gift I'd prepared for him. Hello, everyone. This time on Name a Cockroach After Your Ex, we have here a gentleman named Leo Whittemore. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone! Everyone burst out laughing and Leo literally fainted. And now he's known as Leo the Roach. Actually, this was all Mike's idea. So we can both retaliate against Leo and donate to the Cry Me a Cockroach Wildlife Fund. And back to me. To make things right, I decided to go back to where I started. I realized nothing is impossible when you believe in yourself and when you have a perfect companion to give you the gentle nudge you need. It's the country's fair day today, or as I like to call it, my winning day. See that huge plushie over there? It's about to become mine. Ready, set, and yes! Bullseye! I excitedly took the bear when it suddenly got yanked away by this crazy bull. Hey, I won that bear fair and square, but I saw it first. Now hand it over, hobbit. Hobbit? I yanked the bear from him, but it ended up ripping in half. His girlfriend burst into tears, and now I'm like a red rag to him. He rushed towards me, and before I could even think straight, my fist took over. How many times have I told you, Angie? A girl doesn't just raise her fist and cause trouble like that. It was self-defense. He was gonna hit me, Mom. I'm done with this. Like father, like daughter. Why are you even bringing him up? He left us years ago, so let him stay out of our lives. Even thinking about him made my blood boil. I turned to the window, avoiding the look I knew my mom was giving me. When we got home, we found the door open. Something wasn't right. I quickly ran into the house and saw black shadows standing in our living room. Who are you people? What are you doing in my house? All hail our new leader! The lights suddenly came back on, and I saw them all bow to... Me? Angelina, I've been looking forward to meeting you. I'm Nick Mason, Mr. Bruno's right-hand man. My dad sent you here? From this day on, you will become our new leader of the X organization on his behalf. You gotta be kidding me! For so many years, he hasn't cared about whether we live or die, and now he suddenly wants me to take over? And look at you all. This organization seems no good. Please don't misunderstand us. X organization was founded by your father to help the local people and fight for justice. But things took a horrible turn, so I'm afraid he's gone to jail for a little while. He's in jail? Oh, my head. Fighting for justice? That's why he's in jail now? Your father put the safety of the seaport local first. In doing so, he fell into the enemy's trap. You will understand him better if you accept his wish and become our leader. As much as I hate to admit it, I missed my dad. He once promised that he would skip his work and hang out with me on my birthday, but then he just disappeared without a word and has been quiet for the past six years. Until now. Darling, I have something for you. She gave me some old letters and a plushie bear, which I'd begged my dad to buy for me. She'd hid it from me the whole time, as she was mad at my dad for always risking his life for things that weren't any of his business. It turned out that my dad had still cared about me, even without me knowing. Mom, I've made up my mind. I hope you'll support me. So, my mom and I had a long journey to the seaport of the city where my dad's ex-organization was secretly operating. We walked into the market, then stopped at a large fish shop. How on earth does an organization have their secret base in such a crowded place? The most dangerous place is the safest one. Remember that. I remembered my dad used to say this to me when I was a kid too. This must be his crazy idea. Nick led me into a room at the back of the store and introduced this as the organization's base. So, this is where my dad used to work, and he'd still kept the same old hat all these years? Let's get to work. There's been a lot of theft going on in town lately. 
Every night, the thieves break into stores and steal everything they can. People are panicking right now, so we need to solve this as soon as possible. Isn't this the police's responsibility? If they were capable, we wouldn't have to get involved. That's why your father maintains this organization. Now you need to settle in a bit. I've arranged your accommodation and enrolled you in a local school. Remember, your identity is top secret. For the next few days, at 5 a.m. every morning, Uncle Nick got me up and took me to the port to tell me more about the thieves. However, he just joined the fish auction the whole morning instead of actually doing anything serious. So, I went somewhere else and pretended to talk to the fishmongers about the burglaries in town. At that moment, a guy in a cap that covered his face bumped into me. Hey, dude, nice bracelet, but ever taught to apologize? Hey, hey, take it easy. You're making a scene. Okay, maybe I should just behave like a normal schoolgirl here. Having to get up so early in the morning to go to the port also made me too exhausted to study anything. One morning I was falling asleep at my usual place when some noise woke me up. A group of gangsters was teasing a boy? Dude, I'm trying to catch some shut-eye over here. Shut up, loser. Uh-oh, they were messing with the wrong person. I grabbed a nearby mop and made some fancy moves that took them all down, then dragged the flabbergasted nerd out of there. He wasn't calm enough to run for his life. This little guy is Killian. Ever since that day, he kept following me and wouldn't shut up about how strong I was, saying things like, I could never imagine a small person like you having such crazy strength. Or, they all pick on me, but you, Angel, don't. Then, let's be friends. I have no peace when he's around. While I was trying to make some space for myself, a call suddenly came from Uncle Nick. One of the jewelry shops in the city just got burglarized. Can you help? What? Yeah, I'll head back to headquarters and set up a plan. You can count on me. I then hung up, and that's when I heard a ball hitting the floor. I turned around, and there was Killian, standing behind me, shocked to the core. He'd obviously heard the whole conversation. If you utter a word of this to anyone, you'll not wake to see another day. Do you hear me? I... I can help you. I know this town like the back of my hand. Okay, we can be friends. Or associates. As long as you keep quiet. After school, Killian and I rushed to the crime scene. While wandering around, I spotted a shiny thing among the broken glass. It must have been from those thieves. But wait, I've seen this D symbol somewhere. I was about to pick it up when Killian grabbed my hand, shivering. Bro, it's her who attacked us back then. That gangster suddenly came at me. I tried to dodge him, but ended up toppling over backwards. Suddenly, a strong arm held me back and shielded me from the punch. Mamma mia! Who's this handsome hunk? I wrapped my arms around him and pulled out my inner damsel in distress. Oh, my hero! These jerks won't leave me alone! Please save me! I'm scared! Mess with my friend one more time and you're dead meat. Get lost! He turned to me, making sure I was okay, then parted way. Through Killian, I found out his name is Frank, a senior at our school, and he's known for his cold and reserved demeanor. Definitely my type of guy. But wait, what about the bracelet? I returned to the broken glass window. The bracelet was nowhere to be found. At school, all students were constantly talking about these recent burglaries. Everyone was worried about who would be the next victim. When will all this nonsense stop? I wonder who their next target will be. Don't you see? The recent victims were all the big shots in town, and the crimes were all on the days the police weren't out patrolling. So then, Graham's jewelry shop and Holden's boutique store could potentially be their next target? That makes sense! Uh, wait, Frank? Now that you're here, I feel so much safer. It'll probably be Holden's because Graham already added a new security system to his shop. Please stop fiddling with your hair like that. Good observation. The police don't patrol the port tonight, so they might make a move. So stay still inside, will you, sweetie? Aww. But his sweetie still got to watch Holden shop and catch the thieves red-handed tonight. An hour had already passed, but nothing had happened. Right at that moment, Nick received a phone call that Graham's shop had just been robbed. The thieves broke the security system and everything had been taken. Nick snapped at me for acting impulsively without having any clear evidence. But this felt so sketchy, though. Holden's store was way more vulnerable. It's like they knew we were waiting to ambush them here. A few days later, while I was patrolling around the shopping street, Killian informed me that there was a suspicious masked man sneaking around the pearl shop. I immediately dashed there, right at the moment he was breaking the lock. In the blink of an eye, I kicked him, knocking him to the ground. 
Angelina! Holy crickets, are you okay? I looked up to see Frank running towards me. The thief immediately rose up, causing me to fall back, then fled the scene right away. Catch the thief, quick! Frank and Killian darted past me and followed the guy. I waited for them at the harbor, but only Killian came back. Oh, sorry, Angelina, but I have to say this. There's something fishy about Frank. I think he's on the thief's side. Oh, come on. Are you jealous of him? How do I know you're not their spy? What do you mean? You've been acting suspicious from the get-go. You wouldn't leave me alone for a sec. And remember how you listened in on my conversation with Nick? And what about when you made me so sure it was Holden Shop that would be the next target, hmm? And now you're blaming Frank? You're so wrapped up in that jerk. I saw him purposefully let that thief go. When I was about to catch up to him, Frank suddenly stopped, making me crash into him. Then the thief got away. That, that can't be. He's always there to help me. I'm the one who's always backing you up, but you only see that fraud as your hero. Ugh, just forget it. Wait, I, I had no idea who to trust. It was all so confusing. Right at that moment, I got a message from Frank asking me to go to this meteor camping place as he had something important to say to me. Okay, it was time to confront him and get the truth. I rushed there as fast as I could, only to find... nobody? I looked around and noticed the suspiciously lit up tent. The tent flap suddenly opened, and a shadow bolted towards me. Hey, hey, calm down, it's me. I opened my eyes to see Frank in front of me. He'd set up this whole place for me? Frank suddenly took my hand and confessed. Angelina, I've fallen head over heels for you. I was wondering, will you be my girlfriend? Together, we could be a power couple. With your ex-organization and my Darkwalkers clan backing us, how do you know I'm related to ex-organization? Ha, <laughs> I've been watching you since that first day you wandered around the fish market with that old Nick. <laughs> Remember this bracelet? You almost got me that time. You, you shameless, rotten, stinking skunk! I even trusted you over Killian! Oh, come on. It's not my fault you fell for me and betrayed your best friend. You and I are more alike than you think. It's only fitting that we become a team. Enough! Listen carefully. I'm never going to team up with a dirtbag like you. H how did you- Guys, take her! From the tents, Frank's minions came out one by one and surrounded me, then gradually tightened the siege. Let's see who's the boss now. Oh, no, 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 I fell into his trap. Those punks held a rope, ready to tie me up. But right at that moment, I heard a car engine approaching. Is that Killian leading Nick and the X organization? He jumped out of the car, ran past the minions and Frank to get to me. Angelina, are you all right? You're not hurt anywhere, are you? I shook my head and felt so touched. He'd come to save me. I thought you were mad at me. I was, a little bit. But I couldn't let you do all this alone, so I went to Uncle Nick. Behind Killian, Uncle Nick and the team had seized all the thieves and their ringleader Frank. Now they'd spill all their dirty secrets in front of the law. It turns out, my dad was about to expose the Darkwalker clan for their evil antics when they framed him for intentionally causing injury and put him behind bars. Since I became the new leader of X, Frank had been trying to seduce me so he could manipulate the organization. Finally, though, my dad was found innocent and released. Mom and I welcomed him home with open arms. I'm so sorry for leaving you behind. I was afraid I would put you in danger. It's all right, Dad. You must have had a hard time, too. I'm sorry for taking so long to realize how proud I am of you. I missed you so much. Dad was super impressed with what we had accomplished for the organization. He even decided to let me continue to be the leader, all the while supporting me and teaching me his tricks. And I know for sure everything will turn out okay, especially with this guy by my side. So, did I do a good job proving myself, lady boss? The vice leader position seems to suit me well, don't you think? Hmm, you do deserve a promotion. How does vice leader and boyfriend sound? Hey, I'm Madison, and I was born into a well-off family. My parents are successful entrepreneurs who always fulfill their dearest daughter's wishes. Beautiful face, supermodel figure, I have both. But unfortunately, I'm not the only one. I have a limelight-hogging twin sister, Olivia. Since elementary school, my sister has won loads of trophies for her singing. Everyone was so spellbound by her that they seemed to completely forget about me. And it didn't help when mom dressed us the same. Meanwhile, dad was always like, 
Whoa, I can barely tell my two princesses apart. Maddie, if your sister is tied up with her singing, you could help fill in her place in class. <laughs> Ugh, it's not funny. At all. Especially when that kind of came true. Later at 14, when I was still trying to figure out what today's homework was, my sister went and won the voice kids. At school, everyone kept giving me gifts and praises just to walk off on me as soon as they realized I wasn't Olivia. Hey, it's not like I intentionally tricked them. Trust me, I'm just as sick and tired of all this as everyone else, so I decided to take action. Ta-da! Did you recognize me? Still Madison here. The one-of-a-kind Madison with pixie hair, smoky eyes, nude lipstick, and this edgy outfit. I look different, right? But... Oh, are you cosplaying Olivia and her upcoming MV? Madison, you're ruining your sister's image. I tried to be different from her, but it couldn't change the fact that I'm the twin sister of a famous singer. There's so many things I wanted to do. But just imagine if I tried out for the cheerleading team or a modeling contest. People would be, look at the tragic Olivia wannabe. <sighs> the name Olivia gradually became something that haunted me. And now she's constantly gaining in fame while I remain in her shadow. I have my own dream of becoming a model too, and I've gone to every audition I could, but so far, no luck. Oh right, let's check out my new video. Maybe YouTube will be the Kickstarter for my rise to fame. Remember to remove your makeup thoroughly, and the last step is subscribe to my channel to stay updated with the latest makeup trends. It's only been 10 hours, but look at this. There are over 200,000 views and 1,000 comments. Yay! Let's see. Like if you watch this just because you thought this was Olivia. When you're boring, but you have a famous sister. Olivia, you're the goat. Please reply to my comment. What on earth is going on here? No one talked about the video content. It's all about Olivia. Why can't I get rid of that name? I am Madison. Frustrated, I closed the laptop to leave, but turned around to see the mean girls surrounding me. Silly, you should have titled it Skincare Tips from Olivia's Sister. There would have been millions of views by now. Someone with no talent like you should just stay in the dark, please. Shut up! Just wait! One day y'all gonna become my fans too. Finally, what a long day! But isn't every beginning tough? Me quitting would be exactly what those mean girls wanted, so I can't give up now. I was struggling to set up my camera when mom opened the door and peeked in. You've started a YouTube channel? Why not ask your sister to help promote it? Ah, uh, but no worry. Everyone can obviously see that you're Olivia's sister. You'll probably receive a gold button soon anyway. Ugh, what do you know? I don't even need her help. And please stop entering my room without knocking. Nobody acknowledges my effort just because I look like her. Fine then, just wait and see. In two more months, I'll be 18 and be able to do one thing I've been dreaming of. That will put an end to all this unfairness I had to suffer. This is it, the moment I've been waiting for. Right here, right now, I'll be reborn. I'm ready to start my life anew. You can open your eyes and look at yourself, Ms. Lewis. <sighs> okay, three, two, one. O-M-G in the mirror. A beautiful face, a stranger. Not like Olivia's or anyone I ever know. Finally, I can live my life with my famous sister out of my way. Hmm, I wonder how my parents would react to this face that I myself don't even recognize. Hey, I'm home. Hello, but who are you? It's Madison, aren't you? What happened? Did you get plastic surgery? Plastic surgery? Didn't you say you were on vacation with your friends? Your beautiful face. Why did you? You mean Olivia's beautiful face. I'm done living in her shadow. Then I ran straight to my room, leaving them there all stunned. The next morning at school, all the girls' curious eyes were on me. And the boys? Needless to say, people were buzzing around. But there was no Olivia nor Madison to be heard. Nobody recognized me. I am the one and only now. Hey, Angel. Are you lost? Let me show you around. Since when did this mean girl become so friendly? You moving here is the right decision. Our school is the best in the state. Boring. If it weren't for my parents' new investment in this area, I wouldn't be at this shabby place. This fame-seeking silly girl instantly bought my bluffing. Her eyes widened, looking at me like a puppy. Then she did everything I asked her to. Buying me sodas, carrying my bag for me, and even wiping my seat. <laughs> Suddenly, Alicia walked over and nudged Zara. Where have you been? I told you to get me a latte. And who's she? Oh, this is my new bestie. And you should go get your latte yourself, as I'll be busy showing my friend here around, right? Alicia's frown face was a picture. <laughs> 
What a solid friendship these mean girls have. But the fun had only just begun. As the teacher did a roll call, I raised my hand up at the sound of Madison Lewis. The whole class gasped, and you betcha, Alicia and Zara's bewildered faces were hilarious. Didn't see that coming, huh? By recess, the whole school had heard the breaking news. Me, Madison, just got plastic surgery. Some were showering me with flattery, while some just kept judging the size of my eyes or my nose bridge, blah blah blah. But no one compared me to Olivia anymore. They just forgot about my famous twin sister. That's all I need. Madison is unique. Ouch! What's wrong with you? Are you blind? It was you going the wrong way, Madison. Um, he looks so familiar, but I still can't think of his name. He's... It's Dylan. Have you seriously forgotten my name already? That's right! My old neighbor Dylan! His family must have moved back to town again. But how could you recognize me right away? You look a bit different, but I can still tell from your voice. Forget the past. I'm the new Madison. The best version of Madison. Then I walked away from him. Now I'm finally free to do whatever I want without being compared to Olivia. I easily got that cheerleading captain title. From this spot, I can see all the impressed spectators and Zara's look of fury. <laughs> she was the former captain who got dethroned by me. Then I went on and won the school beauty contest too. Alicia's boyfriend, Sid, even dumped her to chase after me. Who's the loser now, girl? But of course, a jerk like him didn't interest me so I bluntly rejected him in front of everyone. One afternoon while I was going home, Sid jumped out of nowhere and blocked my way. Babe, girls are lining up to date me, but I picked you. Be my girl and you'll see. Come on, just one dinner. Let go of me! Suddenly a big looking guy rushed in, scared Sid off, and then offered to take me home. He introduced himself as Isaac, and turns out we were in the same chemistry class. Oh God, how come I never noticed this handsome boy? Probably chemistry had sucked the life out of me every time I entered that lab room, but it's okay. We can rebuild our chemistry here now. After that day, we texted each other all of the time, and a week later, we became an item. Fast, yes, but when you know, you know. Isaac took care of me during workouts, waited in the salon for hours, and even kept me updated with fashion trends. He's just perfect. But one time, when we walked hand in hand at the mall, I caught sight of Dylan's cold face. I suddenly felt awkward and tried to avoid his gaze. Strange. But why bother? Isaac and I were too busy discussing our upcoming plans anyway. I finally released my second video, and no one mentioned Olivia. But Gigi, Bella, Lily Maymac? Now they're seeing me like those hot girls? Ridiculous! And talk kept coming about how I look like other stars. Maybe she brought their photos and asked the surgeon to copy them. But no way can Replica compete with the original. Still... Isn't it better to resemble your own sibling than being some stranger's copycat? <laughs> so, did I really look like a carbon copy of someone else? Again? I rush to Isaac. He's the only one I can trust. Uh, just a little, babe. But if you don't like it, there's always a way. So I continued to undergo many other surgeries to find the perfect, unique Madison. Isaac was always there to encourage me. He was the one who suggested what part I should fix next. Sharper jawline, thinner nose, fuller lips. He has an eye for this, right? Seems like your eyes still need some fixing. I'll take you there next week. More? I know Isaac only wanted the best for me, but after pouring my fortune on endless plastic surgeries, I was completely broke, and no way would my parents agree to lend me some. Why not ask Isaac, you wonder? I can't do that. I'm not a gold digger. The surgery appointment was coming up, but I still couldn't gather enough money. What to do? What's wrong? Fighting with your guy? Desperate to offload, I blurted out my problem. So, could you help me out? I'll pay you back as soon as possible. I don't know why you think you need all this surgery. If Isaac really loved you, no way would he make you do this. Let me knock some sense into this dude. Dylan seemed so mad. I tried to pull his hand, but to no avail. Thank goodness someone blocked him. That's Olivia. I don't know what she said, but Dylan calmed down and went inside. Then Olivia walked towards me. You're already so pretty, Madison. Don't mind what others say. You guys don't know me at all. I'd rather be weirdly ugly than be pretty, but look the same as someone else. I don't want to be a copy of anyone. Then I stormed off immediately. Waking up after a restless night, I was reaching my phone to call Isaac, then saw an envelope of money on the nightstand. Is this from Olivia? Why did she... Never mind. No time to think, else I'm going to be late for my appointment. Look. My face has healed just in time for my graduation ceremony. Pretty, huh? 
but I haven't been able to bring myself to be happy at all, as it's been over a month since Isaac ghosted me. After the eye surgery that day, Isaac insisted I have my nose fixed too. I said I needed more time to recover, but he got annoyed and just left. I've been looking forward to this graduation, which is compulsory for everyone, so he won't be able to avoid me anymore. My parents came too, but probably for Olivia, and today's spotlight is definitely hers. Suddenly, the crowd surrounding my sister gravitated to something else. Hang on, Isaac? Oh. My. God. Standing next to him is a girl who looks exactly like me, and her dress is identical to the one Isaac once gave me. I rushed over to confront him, but he flung me away. Wow, how buzzing. Both the real deal and the knockoff are here. Can you even tell them apart, Isaac? Stop saying nonsense. My princess is the one and only. Hey, you really do look a lot like me. Who are you? So after countless surgeries, I was still a doppelganger? All I want is just to be myself, to be unique. Why is it so hard? I felt rage filling up my body. I ran to the restroom to calm myself down, but it didn't help because I overheard the truth. Isaac and Naomi broke up when she moved abroad with her family. Guess she's back now. Yeah, how much he must love her to do all this. Great, now I get it. Isaac only wanted me to get plastic surgery to look like Naomi. But once his ex is back, he threw me away like a broken toy. So the gossip girls at school are definitely not missing out on this chance to mock me. Girls, stop! My sister, it's you who needs to stop. Don't you know you're the cause of everything? Calm down, Madison. It's completely normal to look like someone. To me, and to your family, you've always been the one and only Madison. No! I've never been seen as the only one! Then I told Dylan everything I'd bottled up inside. Why I absolutely needed plastic surgery. Why I was so obsessed with the fact that I resembled my sister. Everybody had always thought of me merely as Olivia's shadow. I never knew that's how you felt. I'm sorry, Madison. We are such bad parents. Startled, I turned around to see everyone. Madison, I've never looked down on you. I only thought I could use my reputation to make things easier for you. We always try to do the best we can for you two. We thought this change in appearance was what you wanted. If only we'd realized the painful reason behind it. Oh, wow. They actually cared this much about me? I cried even louder and ran straight into their open arms. Maybe Dylan was right. Maybe I really am special just for who I am, not for what I look like. The next day, I went to school to clear out my locker. High school is over. Now I can shake off all the bad memories I had here. Let's start things anew. Oh, finally found you. Um, Naomi, right? I, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to copy you. I didn't know. It's all right. I know it wasn't your fault. I swear, I had no idea Isaac was that much of a jerk. I immediately dumped him and exposed him online. How could he think us girls are just replaceable items? He even had the cheek to cry and beg me. But men like him don't ever deserve to be near us. I thought you'd be angry with me. For what? Madison, I'm truly sorry for what you had to go through. But everything has a bright side to it, don't you think? What do you think about having another twin sister? My dream of becoming a star on a runway has finally come true. But the most amazing thing was finding a companion with the same passion as me, who's none other than my new identical twin, Naomi. Bet no one can tell us apart. Miss Madison Lewis, would you go on a date with me after this? Oh, but I'm Naomi. Don't ever think you can fool me, Madison. You've always been different in my eyes. The bell had already rung, but here I was, still stuck in chemistry class. Mr. Evans won't stop droning on about the big test coming up. Abigail, Abigail, you do know what a bond is, right? That's easy. My dad goes on about them all the time. U.S. treasuries, Japan bonds. They are financial bonds. We're talking about chemical bonds for Christ's sake. Close enough. Don't you think I deserve a grade increase? Enough. Go and meet your homeroom now. This is unacceptable. Jeez, his bad mood must have been contagious for adults, as Miss Garcia was also in a foul mood. So, Abigail, I will organize a meeting with your dad. M my dad? No, no, he'll go mad and take away my credit card. This seriously cannot go on anymore. Your grades are on a downward spiral. I promise, I'll actually study this time. Please, let me prove it by acing my next test. Your next test? Let's see. That appears to be your chemistry final in two weeks' time. That's perfect! I need time to process all the knowledge I've been learning anyway. And, phew, crisis averted. Now, where's Norma? I need some retail therapy with my bestie. 
Hmm, so I have two weeks to work this out. I mean, you can probably cram in quite a bit within that time. No, Norma! I have to figure out what I need to buy before my dad locks the card! Right then, a nearby waiter suddenly tripped and spilled orange juice onto... Norma and her newly brought Chanel bag! Oh no! But to my surprise, she just smiled and dismissed the waiter. What was that, Norma? What's got into you? Love, I guess? It's still early days, but I'm in love, Abby. <sighs> Isn't the world so dreamy and beautiful? Hmm, you are... kinda happy? Hold up, Mrs. Garcia is single. If I found someone special, then she'd be too distracted to call in my dad for the meeting. Yeah, I guess. Or, you know, you could actually study. Don't be ridiculous. <sighs> Mr. Evans is single too. Two birds, one stone. <laughs> so the next morning, I joined Mr. Evans' chemistry club to spy on him. Wanna hear a joke? What do you think zero says to eight? Nice belt! <laughs> hey girl, can I be the photon to your electron and take you to an excited state? Please, somebody save me already! Yo, Callum, you're late to the party. We're having a blast over here. Are you coming home with me or Mrs. Garcia today? Miss Garcia? Hi, Hank. My mom's staying late at school today, so... This Callum guy is Miss Garcia's son? I sure came to the right place. Mr. Evans then gave some boring lecture about states of matter. After drawing a whole maze of weird symbols and stuff on the board, he asked if anyone had any questions. Here comes my chance. Oh, good. Curiosity is the gateway to knowledge. Go ahead, Abigail. I was wondering if you like tea or coffee? Oh, and also, are you more of a dog or a cat person? Can you please pay attention to the lesson? Callum, as a top student, I think you can help her. Of course you will, Mr. Evans. Poor guy, he's totally oblivious that he's been chosen for my master plan. Who made him Miss Garcia's son in the first place? So, Callum, right? You know, your mom's actually my homeroom teacher. Yeah, I got that figured out long ago. Wait, what? You already knew about me? How can I not? The lowest scoring student in every class? You're my mom's favorite dinner topic. That's why I'm here! Studying to change your mom's dinner topic? Could you help me with that? Nope. I don't know what you're up to, but keep me out of it. No way I was letting this plan fail. So I decided to follow Callum to the library after school to learn more about Miss Garcia. Oops, what a coincidence. Didn't expect you to be here. Thought you'd be studying with your mom 24-7. We're just normal people who do other things apart from studying. You know, reading, watching movies, talking. I guess you and your mom only read specialized books. <laughs> Quite the opposite, actually. We both enjoy Victor Hugo. What about you? Since when were you suddenly interested in chemistry? M me? Why, why not? I've always had the biggest passion for chemistry. The way all the substances interact with each other is mind-blowing. Chemical bonds, you know? If you're that interested, then yeah, I'll make you a master of chemistry. But first, you may want to try reading your book the correct way. Did he just say he'd help me with chemistry? Hmm, why does my gut instinct tell me trouble is on the way? I came home with Callan's precious piece of information about his mom and forged the cheesiest love letter, well, on behalf of Mr. Evans, of course, and made sure to hand deliver it. Who knew someone as strict as Miss Garcia had a soft spot for Victor Hugo romance novels? <laughs> From my hiding spot, I saw Callum open the door and get the letter. Okay, first bird down. The next morning, I was excited to peek into the teacher's room to check on Miss Garcia. But why is the principal here? And in his hand is the love letter. Ye who suffer because ye love, love yet more. To die of love is to live in it. From David. David Evans? <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Bryce. That's actually my uh, literature assignment. Wrong address. <laughs> How in the caramel fudge did this letter end up here? Callum obviously got the letter. I decided to sneak the letter directly into Miss Garcia's bag afterward. Better safe than sorry. In the following days, I needed to send Mr. Evans the other love letter too. Only, Callum was a little too... determined to turn me into a chemistry master. He made sure I got the notes imprinted in my brain, questioned me on the topics like an FBI agent interrogating a hard case, and even had his eyes fixed on me every time I carried out the experiments. I got no time left for my plan. You know what I've come to find out? You're actually not that bad at studying. Just need some more attention. As if I care. When will he leave me alone so I can take the other bird down? Right then, Mr. Evans suddenly called Callum to the discussion room next door. Gotta go. You can finish the oxidation. Remember to measure carefully and not take your eyes off of it for a second. Don't sweat it. I've got this.
As soon as he left, I sneaked into Mr. Evans' room and put the letter in his bag. But when I was about to leave, something caught my eye. A picture of young Mr. Evans. Yikes! Did too much studying and no loving make his hair leave him for good? Hmm, he has a lot of books in here. Some of them are by... Victor Hugo! Ha! Huh. Seems Mr. Evan and Miss Garcia are made for each other. Oh, sugar! The experiment! I ran back to the lab and poured all the substances in... But it was... Weird. What did I tell you? All the time spent on this experiment, just to see it burn! Oh, wait. What is this purplish substance? Mauve! We've accidentally created mauve instead! You're so brilliant, Abby! Didn't really know what was going on, but... Are those my cheeks I can feel blushing? What's gotten into me? Didn't know you two are progressing that fast. Maybe keep it down a notch in public. Seeing Hank made us both turn cherry red and jolt apart. It was just a joke, but somehow my heart was flipping. After the incident, Callum didn't seem so annoyed with me anymore. Instead, he was kind of caring. He would patiently explain things I didn't understand and clean up after our experiments. Talk about having great chemistry together. Literally. The two-week mark soon arrived, but strangely, all the questions were not hard at all. I know all of the answers. They're all on topics I covered with Callum. Later that day, I was walking when Callum zoomed over to me. Mr. Evans said you passed the test. I knew you could do it. Abby, if you'd like, do you want to go out for a movie? Abby, Abby, shocking news. I just saw Mr. Evans and Miss Garcia holding hands in the school garden. Things are progressing. Norma and I both turned into excited dolphins when Callum's happy expression fell. What are you talking about? My mom with whom? Mr. Evans, you should thank Abby. It was her plan to get your mom a new boyfriend. The plan? Is that what you call it? Passion for chemistry? So what? It worked, didn't it? This isn't gonna happen. No way. What's your problem? Why don't you want your mom to be happy? Talk about selfish. Callum couldn't answer and huffed off. He's been ignoring me ever since. And me? I decided to find a new lab partner. Well, if Hank would quit getting in the way, why did he always poke his nose in? I gave Hank a dirty look, but he just pushed Callum toward me. You two are welcome. Ugh, what gives? Callum couldn't even meet my eye. I felt kind of bad for Callum. I guess no one wants to see their parent dating their chemistry teacher, right? Why bother anyway? I should be happy because the plan has worked out. What's up with Callum? Why is he acting as if someone burglarized his house or something? Actually, Callum's dad walked out on them a couple of years back. Since then, he swore to never let anyone hurt his mom again. That's why he's so against your matchmaking plan. That explains a lot, but wait, how did you know about the matchmaking plan? Hank started to sweat bullets while Norma constantly winked at him. Hey, are you guys hiding something from me? Don't tell me- No, no, we're not dating. We- we're- You said it yourself, idiot! Hmm, that makes sense. The next morning, Miss Garcia suddenly got sick, and this Miss Flowers came in to cover. Different from our strict homeroom, Miss Flowers didn't teach much and seems pretty chill with whatever we do in class. Great, huh? Yeah, it would be if she didn't keep on flirting with Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans didn't look comfortable with Miss Flowers at all. She was obviously trying so hard to win him over. Poor Miss Garcia. She looked so happy with Mr. Evans before. My master plan can't have been for nothing. I gotta do something. So I handcrafted a reminder love letter on behalf of Miss Garcia again. That was sure to make Mr. Evans' heart give off butterfly flutters. But I was sneaking it onto his desk when Miss Flowers appeared. Abigail, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Mr. Evans is my dream man, not hers. No, he's not. He and Miss Garcia are obviously made for each other. Duh. I demand that you take that back at once. He's my heart's desire. Mine. No, he's not. He goes all gooey-eyed at Miss Garcia, not you. This is unacceptable. Detention. That's not fair, Miss Flowers. You can't punish her over nothing. You. Garcia's son, right? Wanna play Hero Saves Beauty? Detention for both of you, now! Miss Flowers? More like Miss Tyrant? What kind of a teacher made students clean the windows for detention? Ugh, these stupid windows, breaking my back already. And Callum being all Frosty the Snowman with me is not helping. You brought all of this on yourself. What? If you hadn't have given the love letter to the principal in the first place, Mr. Evans and your mom would be official already. My mom and I are fine by ourselves. Who's being stubborn now? Hank already told me everything. I understand you're upset, but have you ever thought about what your mom wants? She sure looked happy with Mr. Evans. Callum didn't say anything, but I could tell from his glazed eyes that he was thinking hard about this. When Callum and I finally got out of detention, Hank and Norma rushed in. 
We just heard that Miss Garcia has food poisoning. She's fine now, but Miss Flowers will probably cover for another week. Why do I feel like Miss Flowers has something to do with this? She visited my mom yesterday and gave her a casserole. That's it! Miss Flowers must have poisoned Miss Garcia so she could replace her. But this is getting crazy. Hmm, what can we do? How about we publicize all the love letters online so the whole school knows about Miss Garcia and Mr. Evans? I mean, if that's okay with you? Callum didn't say anything and just nodded. We immediately rushed to the IT room, but the computer's locked. Let me handle it. I know the password. With Callum's help, we posted on the school forum. And guess what? Everyone's smitten with Miss Garcia and Mr. Evans' love story. Cute, huh? We then left to visit Miss Garcia, but Miss Flowers appeared in front of us. What do you all think you're doing? Making a fuss on the school forum? I bravely stepped up to face her. You've seen it. Mr. Evans and Miss Garcia belong together. You should just give up on him already. Is that so? You know what? Mr. Evans actually wanted me to meet him for a private talk tonight. And as for your homeroom teacher, guess what? That position will be mine full time. <laughs> I'm afraid you've got it all mixed up, Miss Flowers. It's Mr. Evans, followed by... Miss Garcia! We ask you to come to talk about Miss Garcia's food poisoning. That's right. Earlier today you visited me, asking me if I was ready to come back to class tomorrow. You were very kind and even brought me homemade food. Little did I know that this was a deliberate attempt for you to make me sick. Luckily, Mr. Evans dropped by just in time to get me to the ER. And now you're talking about taking my place? No way! But... But the students clearly love me more anyway. They hate you because you always make them study. Just then, everyone started booing her. Miss Garcia is strict, but at least she's serious with teaching and always makes sure we study. You don't teach us anything. That's right! And we all know about Miss Garcia and Mr. Evans already. You're just being a third wheel. No! No, no! This can't be true! David, tell these kids that our love is as bright as the sun and, and that we're soulmates! I know you love me! Tell them! David, tell them you love me! Tell them! Unfortunately, my heart has always belonged to Miss Garcia. I was nervous about sharing my feelings with her, but fate brought us together, and now I couldn't be happier. Miss Flower's whole expression wilted. Ha! She burst into hysterical tears and ran off. Mom, are you okay? I'm sorry I wasn't there. I'm fine, Callum. Please don't worry. Um, thanks for looking out for my mom. Please, can you take her home for me? Mr. Evans nodded, then took Miss Garcia away. When there were only four of us... Actually, two of us left. Callum turned to me. You were right. It was so silly of me trying to stop people from falling in love. Because when you fall for someone, you can't help it. What do you mean? I mean, I think I've fallen for you. Augustine and I almost took down this fake Roblox plushie smuggling empire when the gang leader suddenly turned vigilant and ordered his members to arm lock us. Pablo, you got it all wrong. We're here to make a business deal. You don't fool me, you sneaky little rats. Think you can catch me? I am invincible! Mwahahaha! <laughs> Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. Pizza's here. Please take your order. Did any of you morons order pizza? S sorry, boss. I, I did. I was starving. Please, could I have a bite quickly before executing these snakes? Go get the door, you dumbo. You, hands over your head. Pablo then came, hide behind the door, as it opened, and standing there, was Jane. Hi, lunchtime. Jane then pulled up her skirt slowly, revealing her stocking. While the gang were dumbfounded, Augustine quickly restrained the gang member, while Jane slammed the door onto Pablo. And me? I stomped onto the guy's foot, elbowed him in the face, and pinned him on the ground. Phew, all hail Queen Jane. Hi, my name is Naomi, a special agent, and these are my partners. Augustine and Jane. With Augustine as leader, we three have successfully cracked the hardest cases, including this one. Augustine is such a respectable senior agent to me, while Jane is actually my annoying stepsister slash partner. It's your turn to write Pablo's case report. Don't push it on to me. Why do you always try to get away with tasks? Just like how you made me do all the dishes at home all the time, too. Team, we got a new case. Amy, straight A student. Lawrence High's representative to the upcoming United Nations event. Missing since Monday. Urgent request from parents and the school to bring the subject back safely. Suspect number one, Shirley. Direct competitor for the school representative title. A mean girl in disguise. So, starting tomorrow, we'll be students at Lauren High to investigate it. Can I join the girl posse and befriend Shirley? Nothing helps spilling the tea easier than blending in with the gossip girls. Okay, but we also got Diane, Amy's stepsister. Quiet and shy. Parents are freaking out and asking her to be watched 24-7 too. 
Jane, what do you think? I can approach Diane and keep an eye on her. Great. Remember, team, do not act by yourself under any circumstance. Lawrence High, I'm coming for you. On the first day of school with my excellent disguise, I confidently strode to the classroom. My mean girl covers quickly got everyone's attention, including this guy. Hey, cutie. Let me show you around, and you can show me the way to your heart. Marco, Lawrence High's jock with a notoriously long list of ex-girlfriends. Meanwhile, Augustine's also taking a good chunk of the ladies' hearts, including Shirley's, my target. So, I purposely walked past her, showcasing my $200,000 Hermes bag, and... Hey, you! Yes, take the bait, fishies. You seem to have a sensible fashion style. Wanna join our group? Sure, I'm Naomi. Right then, Jane passed by. In the shy, nerdy girl covers, of course. Hold on for a second, rookie. Did you borrow your granny's dress for school? Right, Naomi? I... I think... Oh, this hurts my eyes too. Who in God's name wears pastel pink in 2023? Shirley and her entourage were cackling while Jane gave me a hostile look and stormed off. Oh, please. She didn't have to take it so personally. She should thank me for that instead, as now she can naturally be friends with Diane too. Since then, I started hanging around with Shirley and the girls. They love gossiping, which is indeed pointless until the topic of Amy came up. Have guys seen Amy around at all recently? Amy? Who on earth? Amy Hayward, the one competing against you for the school's representative. Oh, that stupid contest. I couldn't care less about it, actually. Thank God it's over. I only joined it because my dad kept insisting. Shirley didn't even remember Amy, nor did she want to compete with her. And now that I've noticed, she's boisterous at times, but actually quite straightforward. My guts are telling me it's not her. So, I brought up my concerns about the case at our next meeting. I'm pretty sure Shirley is clear. What? Do you even think before saying? She's her number one suspect. Plus, from what Diane told me, she's always picking on other students. Yeah, but that doesn't mean she has ill intentions towards Amy. You need to stop judging people too quickly. Uh, excuse me? How about you stop siding with the devils? Or you find it hard because you're one too? Enough. Let's just keep your assumptions on hold for now. We need more clues before acting on anything. Dang it. If only I got some solid evidence. Jane just always slowed down the investigation. So the next day, I went to find Diane myself to ask some more questions about Amy. But Marco stopped me with a bunch of roses? Roses are red. Violets are blue. Sugar is sweet. And so are you. Be my girl, will you? I was still processing this when Augustine came from afar and went straight into the roses. Oops, sorry. I had my sunglasses on. Marco looked like an erupting volcano while Shirley gave an earth-shaking squeal. Eee! Oh, that body and that grace. Oh, great lord, please spare me. During independent reading, Marco and his army came marching toward Augustine to pick a fight. But Augustine completely ignored Marco, which infuriated him even more. Hey, you! Turn your coconut head around and have some courage to face me. Augustine calmly stood up returned his book as if Marco was invisible, and came to ask me to have lunch with him? He pulled me out of there, leaving Marco behind, grunting like a mad pig. It feels good living student life and having the boys chasing after you. Stay away from those teenage boys for me, will you? I don't see why. Don't get your identity revealed. Don't worry, and Marco's such a kid, not my type. By the way, you want to experience a heartfelt infatuation too? Think Shirley is laying an eye on you. The look on his face is priceless. <laughs> Who would have thought this charismatic Asian is actually allergic to girls? During PE, I saw Shirley purposefully tripped and fell in the direction of Augustine, but ended up on the floor instead. Augustine then dashed over to me for help when Marco stopped him midway. Still holding grudges with Augustine, Marco announced a dodgeball war. Oh boy, didn't know what he got himself into. Augustine is our top agent. He dodged every single bullet aimed at him, let alone these plain red balls. In return, Augustine gave Marco one hit of a lifetime that knocked him down on the ground. Lucky for him, Diane was nearby and kind enough to give him a hand. Still, Marco gave the biggest grin when he spotted me and headed over to hand me a piece of paper. Will you go out with me? What a loser. He must have taken a new interest in you, Naomi. Rumor had it he asked Amy out, but then she went missing. Probably that poor girl couldn't handle him. <laughs> Marco met up with Amy before she went missing. Uh-oh, he's our number one suspect now, not Shirley. I eagerly updated Augustina Marco. I have a feeling Marco knows something about the case that might lead us to Amy. 
I was thinking I could pretend to go on a date with him. That's too dangerous. What if he's behind it all? You might get into trouble, Naomi. No worries. He seems really into me. He asked Amy out and she went missing right after. Who knows what could happen to you? But he's the only lead we have now. Shirley is already out of the picture and I know how to protect myself if anything happens. Please? And yes! The time has come for me to end this case. During the date, Marco was so caring, but I was dying to know what happened to Amy that day. So, I heard you and Amy were a thing before? Nah, we never got together. How can you be so perfect? Are you an angel? I heard otherwise. Rumors had it you even went out with her. Let's just focus on us, why don't you? But I want to know more about you too. Fine, fine. If you want to know it that bad, I did ask her out, but I never saw her that day. Her sister showed up instead. Sat there at a reserved table and said something about Amy wouldn't be around for a while. I thought they wanted to mess with me, so I just left. Diane knew Amy would disappear even before she went missing? Did Diane have anything to do with this? She might have been the very piece we'd overlooked from the beginning. I got to the office and saw Augustine fidgeting around. Are you okay? Did Marco do anything to you? I'm fine. And I got the biggest news. I then told Augustine and Jane everything and posed my doubts for Diane. Why Diane? She's just a vulnerable victim who gets picked on all the time. And you know by who? Shirley! She might appear vulnerable, but who knows what she's got inside. And you remember how she came to help Marco up that time? Now that I think about it, she was so worried for him. She obviously likes Marco. It's possible she might get jealous of her sister. Oh, stop. Not everyone is a jello like you. What? Team, this is getting nowhere. For now, let's just agree on keeping Diane close. Again, no one is to act by themselves. A jello? Just watch me nail this case before you do, Jane. The next morning, I saw Diane secretly watching Marco play basketball. I swear to God, Diane is definitely into him and involved in her sister's missing. But Augustine wouldn't let me do anything. That'd leave me with the only option, which is to keep Diane's activities on watch. Indeed, she's been acting very strange lately. She received regular phone calls and would get out of class, just to return with a troubled face. I decided to tail her that afternoon. She looked very suspicious and kept turning around to check if anyone was following her. She's definitely hiding something. We were walking for quite some time, passing a vast area of abandoned field crops, until she stopped in front of a shabby house. This is clearly not a building for residency. The whole place looked so torn apart, and even had traps everywhere. Thank God I had all that training back in the academy to spot these deadly traps. Suddenly, I saw a flashing shadow sprinting right across the room. I quickly followed and saw a door leading to the dark basement. Diane, or whoever was staying here, is not going to be simple to deal with. Oh no, it's a trap! If you dare move an inch, you're done. Now tell me, who are you? Are you from the Dixie Mafia trying to get back at me? Mafia? N no, you got it wrong. I, I came to check on the electricity for this building. Please calm down. She's lying again, Mr. Gordon. I knew she was up to no good. Speak now if you want to stay intact. Oh no, no, no. I should have listened to Augustine and not let my stupid adrenaline take over. Is this the end of my mission? The end of my life? Suddenly, there was a loud banging sound. FBI! Don't you dare touch her! It's Augustine! FBI? What? No! No, what's happening? Are you not from the gang? Jane was there for me too. She quickly took the bomb remote and turned it off. Fake bomb. Are you kidding? I quickly got out of the trap safely. Special Agent Naomi Cooper, where are you hiding Amy? No, no, you got it all wrong. Mr. Gordon's Amy's biological father. How can he hurt her? I looked at Augustine and Jane, who were as shocked as I was. Mr. Gordon used to work for the gang, but he turned his life around. That's why he thought you were the old gang, coming at him for revenge. Not long ago, he contracted a serious illness that needs a kidney transplant, and Amy is the only relative he's got left. You're telling me Amy agreed to give him a kidney? Then why are you here in the dark? Why hide? Because Amy's mom hated me and forbade me from seeing her, let alone giving me a whole kidney. But Amy is my daughter with a golden heart, even though I didn't want to. She insisted on giving me a kidney so I could live on. If mom knew about it, she would never agree. That's why Amy had to run away to have the transplant done with Mr. Gordon. Where is she now? Resting in that room. Don't worry, Mr. Gordon has been taking well care of her. Meanwhile, I helped bring them food and necessities. I quickly kicked the door open and saw Amy lying on the bed. What was all the commotion, Diane? Did you bring dad some squash? Augustine, Jane, and I saw it through now. We all got it wrong this whole time. 
The next day, we went to find Amy's mother and had a talk with her. She was shocked at first, but after knowing everything, she realized how wrong it was to separate father and daughter. She was so touched by her daughter's precious heart and agreed to let Amy come visit Mr. Gordon from now on. Looking at the sisters makes me think about my own sis. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. We gave each other a tight hug. We are sisters too in the end. Well, case closed. Let's go for some grand celebration, shall we? Actually, I have a date now. Why don't you take Naomi with you? Then she just left us there, cheeky Jane. I'm so relieved you're okay, Naomi. Because if anything happens to you... Yeah, Augustine? If anything happens, I would die for you. Hi, Melanie here, and I am hanging on the edge of my seat to hear the results of this year's science fair. I know I might not look like a typical studious girl, but I'm definitely serious about school. Ooh, one second. The winner of West High Science Fair 2023 is Harry Silver. That means the runner-up is Melanie D'Angelo. Congratulations to you both. Please come onto the stage for your awards. Man, I can't believe I'm second to him again. We'd been literally swapping first and second place on every leaderboard since we were kids. Ugh, so unfair. Look at him. All he did was partying and pulling silly pranks, yet he's still on the honor roll, while I had to study day and night to maintain my straight A's. Mmm, mom's taking quite long. What's that commotion over there? This calls for a celebration. What do you guys think? Olive Garden? Yes! yes. Jeez, can you keep it down just a smidge? Come to think of it, people like Harry just have it all, while I only have mom by my side. Oh, she came just in time! Dad left us for another woman a while ago, so my mom had been struggling every day being a single mom. She must be really sad and lonely, so I'd never mention Dad anymore. Poor her. The more I felt for Mom, the angrier I was at Dad. Only my bestie, Izzy, knew about this, cause, you know, it's hard to open up when you're from a broken home. Luckily, there's one thing in this world that could raise my spirits, as well as my heartbeat, in these dark, gloomy days. My dreamy crush, Cameron. Last year of middle school was coming to an end, so I gotta make a move with Cameron fast. The problem was, every time I got close to him, that party pooper appeared out of nowhere to make fun of me. He kept calling me melanin, cause that's what you lack, and bothered me nonstop. We had never gotten along, but seriously, what's wrong with him lately? He picked on me way too much, and why only me? I can't believe everyone thinks he's a model student. To me, Harry's no more than the most annoying bug. All right. Hair, makeup, pearly white teeth, check. I'm giving it another go today, waiting for Cameron at his locker with my love letter in hand. As soon as I saw his gorgeous face, I took a deep breath, then put up the sweetest smile, but all of a sudden, someone messed up my hair from behind. Ouch! I turned around to see the culprit. Harry, you look hot. And it generates electricity, too. Now you can charge your phone with your hair. Thank me later. <laughs> Oh my god! Nobody should see this Medusa hairdo! My plan to confess failed again before it even started. All thanks to that clown Harry. Wait, isn't that my dad? He was walking out of the principal's office with a much younger woman and a boy my age. From what I gathered, they're saying that his son would go here. Seeing how my dad's starting a new life with his new family, I couldn't help but feel sorry for mom. This is all that woman's fault. If she just disappeared, things could go back to the way they were. But that's merely a wish, and me and mom just have to put up with this boring, unhappy life day by day. Voodoo for dummies? Was some higher power listening to me? This sounds like an answer to my problem. I ordered the book immediately. I started studying all kinds of spells and rituals in it as soon as the package arrived. Voodoo dolls? Interesting. The next day, I went to find Izzy ASAP. Hey, I'm thinking of using a voodoo doll on my dad's new wife to bring my parents back together. What do you think? Does it really work? I don't think. Yo, Wednesday. Sorry. <clears throat> Yo, knock off Wednesday. <laughs> Harry Silver, you are so dead. But wait a second. You know what? We can test it out. Harry would be the perfect guinea pig. What? Him? He's just being his playful self. What if voodoo actually works? Harry doesn't deserve it. Well, I don't think so. Let's make a doll for our little preppy boy then. 
Crocheting a doll's easy. However, the tricky thing was getting my subject's hair, and you bet I won't get physically close to Harry even if someone pays me to. So I got this, a Ouija board. It will help me figure out the code for his locker. There must be a few strands stuck on the fancy hairbrush that he kept inside. Ugh, but none of the combos worked. This is the tenth time already. How about this? There we go. But there were only books inside. Ah, uh, boring. Then the soccer team's changing room it is. I will definitely find something on his uniform. Let's see. Harry, silver. There it is. Aha, gotcha. I was about to flee the scene when I suddenly saw a boy with only a towel around his waist. Ah! I sprinted to the door and dashed straight through the hallway. That was close. Okay, I still had a voodoo doll to finish. And it's done. I excitedly show Izzy last night's work. Pretty good, huh? It has Harry's hair, too. What? How do you know it's really Harry's? What if it's somebody else's? Well, I-, I... Hey, did you hear some perv with panda eyes was creeping around the boys' changing room yesterday? Go away. But don't worry. Starting today, we'll take turns guarding the entrance to catch them. Oh, what a coincidence. You fit the culprit's description perfectly, melanin. But you're definitely not that pervy, are you? <laughs> I was so mad, I felt smoke coming out of my ears. I wish my gaze could kill that brat. Mel, you're squeezing the doll's arm. It's gonna come off. Whoops, my bad. Next time I saw Harry, he had bandages all over his right arm. Hang on, did I do that? Feeling guilty and curious, I approached him. Hey, what's wrong with your arm? It's been in pain since yesterday for no reason. My doctor said nothing's wrong, but I kept feeling like someone's squeezing it really hard. Ugh, there it goes again. Oh, spooky. It means the doll is truly magical. I immediately came running to tell Izzy, and of course, she was shocked too. But hold up, nosy, arty? How long has he been standing here? This guy clearly had heard everything. He kept reaching for my doll. No way. He'd tell the whole school about it. Then suddenly, Harry sat down next to me. Melanie, my arm hurts. Feed me. Uh... What's he pulling now? Can't he see I'm in the middle of something? Right at that moment, Artie snatched my doll. Leave it to me. No, Artie, no! Not with milk in his mouth. Oops, sorry, I felt so nauseous all of a sudden. That was more than enough to make all of us firm believers. But maybe I should stop. I do feel guilty for dragging Harry into this. That afternoon, when I was about to throw the doll in the trash can, I saw Cameron walk towards me. Did Christmas come early? Hey, I was wondering if you're... Yes, I've been waiting so long for this day. An occultist? What? I mean, Artie was going off about a voodoo doll of yours, so I thought you might know a thing or two about love spells. But if that's not true, I'm sorry. Um, what do you need a love spell for? Then he revealed he wanted to put a spell on his crush, Regina. So all this time, I had no chance with him at all? But hey, a love spell sounds like a brilliant idea. It could ensure my parents' reunion too. Sure thing, but I'll need your hair as well as Regina's. Also, some of your personal items for the spell to work. Obviously, I'll use his stuff, but in a love spell for me. And you know what I gave him? It's all junk with some of my poodle's fur. <laughs> a few days later, I found a gift box in my locker from Cameron. My spell worked. I'm about to have a boyfriend and reunite my family. But before I could carry out that long-awaited plan, Artie came to me with a difficult request, making a voodoo doll of Brad, some transfer student who already established himself as a vicious tough guy. That sounds dangerous, and I already promised myself not to use voodoo anymore. Don't believe me? See for yourself. Then, I followed him and witnessed another student being picked on by a much bigger guy. Hey, isn't he Dad's stepson? Okay, this Brad guy deserves it, so I agreed to help Artie. The next day, I approached Brad after class where he usually messed with other students. I managed to sneak up behind him and get one strand of hair. Oh no, busted. I quickly put the hair in the doll. This better work. Come on! Why isn't it working? And why now? Pesky little thing. Stop! Stop. I know those voices. Thank goodness. Touch her and you'll regret it. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll call the police. Brad just scoffed and left. Phew, what are you both doing here? And Harry, I thought your arm hurt. Then Harry and Izzy finally told me that voodoo had never been effective. Izzy knew that Harry only picked on me because he liked me? 
That's why she tried to stop me from using voodoo on him. But she couldn't, so she then told Harry everything. To be honest, I found your attempts quite amusing, so I acted like they were successful to humor you and myself. I was gonna stop, though, but when you were being sweet to me and asked about my arm, I decided to keep it up. Oh. My. God. My bestie had been friends with my mortal enemy all along. Behind my back? Am I a joke to you? Why are you here? To make fun of me even more than you already did? Because I got worried when I heard you're going after Brad. Melanie, you're the smartest girl in school. I don't understand why you're doing all these dumb gimmicks. Yeah, you've been acting strange lately. Since when are you superstitious? What other choice do I have? Voodoo or at whatever cost? I need to get my parents back together. And that punk Brad is my dad's stepson. He deserves whatever comes to him for ruining my life. And you know what else? Both of you, get out of my sight for good! Then I stormed off. After that day, I no longer talked to Izzy, and Harry's relentless pestering finally stopped. But honestly, it felt a bit empty without them, especially with the upcoming school field trip. Of course, I'm still coming. Who needs them anyway? This is the chance for Cameron and I to be closer now that we're talking on the regs. It's gonna be the best trip ever. I've never been the outdoorsy type, but does camping involve this many physical tasks? Almost done. What on earth is that? Isn't he under my love spell already? I mean, he even gave me a present. I was still in shock when Cameron came over to help with the tent. Thank you. No need to. I can't thank you enough. That spell of yours worked wonders. What does he mean by that? Then, out of nowhere, Izzy tapped on my shoulder. I've tried to tell you. Those two have been flirting for a while now. I guess Cameron just needed your spell as a little spiritual push. That means none of these has ever worked? There's absolutely no hope of bringing my family back? Feeling devastated, I burst into tears and ran off. I was running without looking and bumped into... Brad? Melanie, right? Just who I want to see. Or should I say, my dear stepsister, your mama sent you here. Let go of me and piss off. <laughs> I wonder how pathetic she had to be to have her husband walk out on her. <laughs> if this was any other time, I would have fought back. But after all that just happened, I've lost all of my will to do anything now. Out of the blue, I saw someone charge at Brad and land a brutal blow on his face. I said I'd make you regret touching her. I had to stop Harry before he messed Brad's face up beyond recognition. It's time we got out of here. Why did you come help me after everything I said? I'm kind of used to your coldness. Besides, my love language is following you around and teasing you until you notice or get mad at me. Silly. I know. On a different note, I thought you knew that voodoo was useless. Yeah, so I thought of a love spell to get my parents back together. Then my family will be whole and happy again. But I know it now. There's no such thing as magic. Why not? Magic is alive and well inside you, and it is called forgiving. It cannot punish those who hurt you and your loved ones, but it can help you let go of your pains and sufferings. What are you trying to say? I mean, no magic can make your dad come back, but someday the pain he caused you won't ache anymore. Eventually, your mom and you will heal and lead a fulfilling life without him. I never took this goofy guy for the philosophical and mature type, but I guess he's right. I'd been so caught up in my own bitterness that I didn't realize moving on was an option. When my mom picked me up, I decided to finally ask her about my dad. Unexpectedly, mom told me that of course it was sad at first, but she's actually doing fine these days. Life's supposed to have its ups and downs. As long as we welcome them with open arms, everything will turn out all right in the end. After all, your father will have the life he wants while we get on with our our lives. Turned out, I was the only one chasing the past all this time, when what I actually needed was closure. Mom's words were more than enough to put this grieving period behind me. My last year as a middle schooler was quite eventful. Brad was no longer a problem since he got a taste of Harry's fist. Did I mention that we became a trio of best friends? For now, at least. Harry never stopped his shenanigans, but instead of getting annoyed like before, I found him quite adorable and endearing. Oh, just kiss already? Izzy! I was skipping to the kitchen to see the apple bag Dad had prepared for my school picnic. Aww, how thoughtful of him. I excitedly took a bite, but it tasted like it had been left to rot for a decade. I frantically checked the bag and saw this was not the only bad one. Dad! Hey, I'm Doris, and things like this are an everyday occurrence for me. 
My dad's clumsy and colorblind, two contributing factors that sure make life interesting. Since mom passed away, I had to watch him like a hawk, else you betcha he'd mess stuff up. One time he roasted a turkey, but it was so raw as if it would jump off the plate and run around the house. And on my last birthday, he got me a pair of mittens with one bright orange and one neon green. I reluctantly tried them on, looking like a clown while people burst out laughing. Despite all that, he's still an awesome dad in my eyes. A super talented artist with incredible artwork, provided he lets me label the paint colors. And also a really big supporter of my dream. From the first time he helped me skate on the lake, I knew it was my life's calling. If I can be an artist, even though I'm colorblind, how can just a few bumps stop you from being a figure skater? Bravo. I'll definitely give him a 100. Except that he does have one bonkers rule. No dating until I'm 18. Whatever. It's not like I gave boys much thought. The only boy I spoke to was my neighbor, Ben. And dad seemed to like him. That kid's pretty good. He likes drawing and artists are caring people. Just like me. <laughs> and he seems to not attract it to girls, either. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but it's true that we can never be a couple. His mushy manner is definitely not my type. Anyway, it's super fun having him as a friend. Since we were little, Ben always went along with anything I asked, from drawing me a unicorn picture from my room, giving me his only ice pop, to more exciting things, such as knocks and runs, and covering the neighbor's car in toilet paper. <laughs> And now, he always escorts me to my skating practice a few towns away, and just sits there scribbling something until I finish. This whole month I've been practicing so hard for the upcoming big competition in town. I'm gonna bring a medal home. This is my time to shine. I started gliding, letting the rhythm control my movement. The cold, calming breeze pushed against me like I was flying. It's time for an axle jump. I sprang into the air like a cotton ball, but suddenly lost my balance and fell flat on my face. As a result, I was ranked 29 out of 30. Duh. But surprisingly, there was one judge giving me all high marks. Finally, someone saw my potential. I was beaming when this cute guy approached me. Hi, I'm Luke. Just wanted to say that you were absolutely on point out there. Oh, he's that guy. I really want to get to know you more. How about we hang out together? I'll take you somewhere as special as you are to me. This is definitely against dad's rule, but oh boy, his killer smile made my stomach swoosh. So I ended up saying yes. I excitedly told Ben, but he gave me this sour face look. Hey, your dad will not be happy if he knows this. Just don't let him know. Luke is an expert, so he can help me hone in on my talent. You will keep this a secret, won't you? So here's my first date ever. Luke was so sweet. He complimented my ice skating and constantly gave me these loving looks. Our food arrived and delish. Bon appetit. I daintily tried the mashed potato and immediately felt the delicious taste of warm butter and chives and something pointy. A hairpin. I quickly stood up, demanding to see the manager, but Luke stopped me. Babe, you found the gift I prepared for you. Then he grabbed the hairpin and wiped it on his shirt and put it on my hair. <laughs> Maybe this was a normal thing for guys to do on dates, right? Only his gifts show didn't stop there. Later I found a ring in my steak, then a keychain in my salad. You're cute, just like this Lotso. Isn't he the bad guy? But the cherries on top were the movie tickets in my sandwich. Luke, what's this about? I just hope we could bond over watching movies together. You hate it that much? N no, no, I didn't mean that. Think about it. It was kind of weird, but also the sweetest thing that had ever happened to me. Luke had a funny way of showing it, but he made me feel special and giddy. And maybe in love? Before I could think straight, he was leaning closer to me. I closed my eyes and was ready for the most romantic kiss ever. But why were his lips so hard and unmoving? What? The menu? And holding it was... Dad? You know this crazy old man? I am her father. Then Dad dragged an extra chair over to our table, plopped down, and started babbling on. Then, when Luke wasn't looking, Dad poured pepper into his coffee. Before I could say anything, poor Luke took a sip and spat it out everywhere. Mm, sorry. I thought it was sugar. You see, I'm colorblind, so it was an honest mistake. After that, he accidentally splashed the sauce on Luke's shirt, then grabbed his glass of red wine and poured it over Luke, saying he was trying to clean it. Enough! Your old man is insane! No one will ever date you again! Then he stormed away. I was furious! How could Dad embarrass me like this? You're controlling, crazy, and do the stupidest things! You don't allow me to be me, and you just scared away my date! 
None of his apologies could move me. I had the right to make my own choices without dad interrupting and being ridiculous. So I used my savings and moved out of my home to start my new life. This freedom was greater than great. I could talk to any guy and go on as many dates as I wanted. Only, I know there's always were extra eyes on me. Do you get the feeling someone's watching us? No way. It's just you and me. I've had a great time. Do you want to do it again? Ugh! What the fudge? If Dad thinks he can stop me by messing around like this, he's totally wrong. It did quite the opposite instead. I started dating loads of guys, even if I didn't like them that much. It was so nice being spoiled by boys, and my room was always full of their presence. I updated Ben all about my dating stories, but he just frowned. Yo, slow down. You want to speed date the entire town? Man, it's just dating. It's not like I've agreed to be their girlfriend or anything. But you don't even know them, or what their intentions are. My dad doesn't understand me. Why now you sound just like him? Fine, don't feel like you need to come here or give me rides or anything. I can make my own way to school and get my date to come with me to practice from tomorrow. I'm sorry, Doris. Ignore me. I'm probably just overthinking stuff. Yeah, Ben's Ben. <sighs> He's still the one I could count on after all. Anyway, being a serial dater can cause troubles. I muddled up Gregory's interest with Ivan's. And I forgot I already told Anton my hilarious story the third time already. I was late for my date with Hector because my previous shift with Ryan went on longer than I expected. Then being so exhausted from all of this dating, I fell asleep during my meal with Christian. Luckily for me, Ben was always there to help. What's up? You look exhausted. I don't know. Dating was fun at first, but now it left me no time to rest and now I can't even distinguish those guys. <laughs> hey, what's so funny? Nothing. It's just nice not having to share you with an alphabet of guys. Don't worry, you're the only bee in my life. One day after school, a group of boys surrounded me and started accusing me of being a cheater. Hey, it wasn't like I was anyone's girlfriend, so it wasn't classed as cheating. I'm still single, so I can go on many dates as I can. Only, my outburst seemed to make them even angrier. As all these guys shouted at me, a cop walked over. Hang on, is that dad? Hey, hey, you boys stop bothering this young lady right now. I just finished a karate course already. I'll give you a piece of my mind. See? Hiya! Hiya! What a bunch of weirdos. Thank God Dad came here on time to save me. But it's such a shame that he saw I was a helpless failure at everything. So my shame became rage. Who asked you to show up in magazine? Quit bugging me with all your nonsense. I can handle this myself. When I returned to my apartment, Ben was sitting there waiting for me. Overwhelmed with everything, I burst into tears. He pulled me into an embrace and I instantly felt better. But then... Doris, stop with the games and just go home. Games? This isn't a game. This is my life. I deserve to live it how I want to. You're too much of a coward to ever understand that. As soon as I said it, I regretted it. Ben looked so hurt and mad. He just shook his head and left. I honestly thought he was the one person who would never leave. But whatever. I didn't need him. Or dad, either. Now I had to prove to dad that I was mature enough to handle independence and could find someone much better than Ben beside me. Just wait and see. Told you. Now God bless me with this guy, Mark. A super strong and macho BF who was always ready to protect me. Babe, look out. What? Just let me handle this. Then he moved me out of the way and punched right to the wall. Wow, that's a mosquito. Thank you for saving me. One time, we were strolling through the school's garden when I spotted Ben. I immediately gave Mark a cute damsel in distress look and said, Babe, I'm so tired. I think I'm gonna pass out. Don't worry. I'll take you to the hospital. Suddenly, he lifted me over his shoulders and carried me off. My head was spinning, and it made me want to faint. Literally. I begged him to put me down and let me sit for a while. Then, I suddenly saw Ben frowning at me. Ha, huh, seeing me totally fine without him, how can he not be annoyed? But who was that? She started staring at his art passionately. Then, can you believe it? She asked him to draw her, and he agreed. I can't stay here watching this ridiculous play. So I grabbed Mark's hand and pulled him away. But that night, I kept tossing and turning, and the image of Ben and that girl couldn't get out of my head. No, no, no big deal. They were just super irritating, that's all. Too many things happened, and now it's time for me to focus on my figure skating dreams again. With my sugar plum. As he went off to buy us some drinks, who should come over to me but my first date disaster, Luke? Oh, you're still ice skating. Just give up already. I only give you a high score so you date me. Don't flatter yourself. By the way, your crazy old man's still doing good? Shut up. My dad was right about you, you jerk. Jerk? Okay, this jerk will tell the rink manager to ban you from coming here for good. 
I stared at him, open mouthed not knowing what to say, when out of nowhere Ben appeared. I don't think the skating committee would be impressed by your fake scores, do you? All it would take is one email and you can kiss your position on the judging panel goodbye. How dare you! Then he left in anger. Right at that moment, Mark returned. Babe, skating sucks, just quit it. Let's go for some trampoline then. Dars, go practice. No one dares to ban you now. Who the freak are you? Mark, stop! That's Ben, my friend. Uh, no, just an acquaintance. Dars, watch yourself with that guy. It's none of your business. Let's go, Mark. Bye, loser. The next day at school, I saw Ben with that girl again. My heart thumped in sadness, and I don't even know why. Maybe I was so used to having Ben around me, and honestly, I missed him a lot. Mark soon followed my gaze over to Ben. Isn't that the dude from the ice rink? Why are you gawping at him? He was lunging toward Ben right after. I grabbed his arm trying to stop him, but he pulled me away instead to a corner. You are my girl. Remember that. In front of me was a total stranger. Not the normal Mark I know. He was supposed to protect me, but now all I felt was scared. I couldn't move. Mark leaned over to kiss me, and I immediately blocked him. What? How dare you? Oh no, I'm screwed. Ah, uh, terrorizing your own girlfriend, I see. Nice. Ben? Right on time. You're so done with me. Then Mark grabbed a flower pot and charged at Ben, but I panickedly pushed him over before he could do anything with it. He stumbled about, mumbling something, when Ben's fist came out of nowhere. You, you, you want another punch? Mark waved his fist at him, but then turned around and hurried off. I stared at Ben. I couldn't believe my eyes. He was strong and protective, totally different from the soft Ben I knew all this time. Doris, I think it's time for you to go home. Have you ever wondered why your dad really did that? I, I... Ben was right, and the day's drama made me realize how much I missed Dad. I wonder how he was doing. I arrived back to find Dad sitting all alone, dozing off, amid a pile of mess. He was in stained clothes, and on the easel was an unfinished picture of... Me. With tear-stained eyes, I ran to him and held him tight. I'm so sorry for leaving. I thought I would be okay by myself, but I'm definitely not. I miss you. You're back. I miss you too, darling. I felt so bad for upsetting Dad. When I calmed down, we talked through our problems. Sweetie, I know. It's just hard. You're all I have left. I just worry you're too young to make the right decision and can't bear seeing these idiots hurt you. But Dad, I need experience to learn and grow too. Support me, will you? Um, of course. I always wish you can find a kind man who understands, supports you, and is always by your side, and makes you truly happy. All those qualities reminded me of someone. I kept chasing after trivial things out there, thus forgetting the one who was standing by me all the time. So I immediately went to find him. Hey, Ben. Oh, hey. You'll be pleased to know I've moved back in with Dad. Yeah, that is good news. Look, Ben, I'm sorry. I've been an idiot. I took you for granted, and now I feel very bad for this. I, um, was wondering if you'll take me to practice tomorrow? I'll think about it. And I didn't expect to see you confronting a tough guy like Mark. You're not just a timid, arty type, are you? Who says I'm timid? I'm only like that when I'm with you, because it makes you happy. I'm actually fully capable of looking after myself. And, um, you. Blue sky, white clouds, golden sand. Such a perfect day for sunbathing on this luxury Hawaiian beach while being served by Kirby, my arch enemy. That brat used to tease me all the time about my old clothes and messy hair. Little did she know, I was secretly a millionaire. Earth to chlorine. Castle building all day won't fill your stomach. Finish your shift and go home. Well, Mary, who doesn't want to get rich? Sadly, some of us can only dream about it. If you want to be Cinderella, then go find yourself a prince. Just not Danny. He's just as poor as us. Do not underestimate my Danny. My precious heart fell for him for a reason. It's just that he doesn't seem to realize that we're destined for each other yet. But Mary was right. My dinner won't cook itself. Let's see what we can afford for tonight. My dad left us when I was four. And since then, mom worked her socks off to provide for us. So it was down to me to also work to save up for my law school dream. All of a sudden, groceries started raining down on me. Bottles tumbled off the shelves and broke into pieces right by my feet. Ah, is it an earthquake? I stooped down and prayed until it stopped. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but geez, it sure left a freaking mess. Warren, the store owner, looked distraught. This place was all he had, so I helped him clean up and place anything undamaged back on the shelves. Before you leave, please take this as a token of my gratitude. I hope it brings you luck. A lottery ticket? I don't know how this game works. 
I'll show you, it's simple. Each ticket has a unique set of numbers. Just check the results on TV tonight and see if they match. Let me see, your numbers are 15, 26, 14, 48, 0, 7, 23. Hey, those are the lucky numbers that have been on my mind all day. I want that ticket. Kirby, stop poking your nose in my business, will you? Sorry, miss, that's the last ticket today, and I already gave it to Clarine. Then I'll buy it. Here's your two bucks. Give it to me. You wish. I didn't really care about this ticket, but there's no way I was going to let her get what she wanted. And surely, she wouldn't leave me alone. How about ten bucks? That's a fortune to the likes of you. No thanks. I'd rather win millions instead and make you my maid. Look, you'll never get anything from me, be it this ticket or Danny. Just give up. Fine! Let me skip this stupid ticket, but Danny, never! Why are we always bickering, you ask? Well, we're both competing for the heart of Danny. Tennis extraordinaire and brooding Adonis. Actually, I thought I had more advantage as he worked part-time at the same restaurant. But nope, Danny was such a cold fish. I tried again and again, but every single time, he just gave me a soulless thank you and that's it. If only I could build him his own tennis courts, perhaps he'd change his attitude. But that's impossible for a poor girl like me, unless I somehow hit the jackpot. The lucky numbers today are 48, 07, 15. Should I add winning the lottery to my daydream list? <laughs> 26, 14. Is it just me or do those numbers sound familiar? No way, it can't be. And the mega ball is 23. Now if your ticket has all six numbers, you win over 20 million dollars. Play on me. I think I just become a millionaire. God had answered my prayers. What? Kirby's here too? The ticket must have hit it for real. I rush there to rummage through the trash. And ah, here it is. It's mine. As if. Let's go ask Warren who this ticket belongs to then. Brilliant. And then give him a third of the prize? Do you really expect him not to ask for a share? Right. Okay, let it go and I'll give you a 30% share. Great ratio, but 30% is a perfect fit for you. I'll take 70% and Danny. Oh, that's how you want to play. Fine then. How about whoever wins Danny's heart gets 70%? Deal. So we agreed to hide the lottery ticket in a trunk with two locks. Each of us kept one key to it. Then we buried it in a bush at school. Looks like the secret race between us starts now. Kirby wasted no time and brought Danny the showiest lunches ever. But he kept up his cold exterior and barely acknowledged her. Seems like I need a more delicate approach. So I told Mary to arrange a team building game among the restaurant staff, in which we all had to answer the same questions to understand one another better. Oh look, he liked watching Star Trek, listening to Sam Smith, and reading Harry Potter like me. Oh Danny boy, I told you we were destined to be a pair. Next question. What is the key to maintaining a long-term relationship? There's our very first answer. Feelings? Come on, Danny, be realistic. What uses do feelings have if you can even afford to go on a date? Poor people can also be happy in love, but I don't think pragmatic people like you can. No, no, he misunderstood what I meant. After that, he ignored me completely. Worse still, Kooky Kirby never left him alone. She even brought the whole cheerleading team to do this ridiculous routine while he was playing. Who cheers on a tennis court? She was going big, so I needed to step up my game. It's time to bust out my college savings. I spent the whole day at the mall buying him gifts and giving myself a makeover. This is the first time in my life I've spent my hard-earned money without considering the price. It feels so good, but at the same time, kind of bad. But I could make it up with the lottery money once I got Danny's heart. Look, I saw this watch and I immediately thought of you. I even met a professional tennis player at the mall. Can you believe it? And they told me this racket is the best. What do you think? You're crazy. This costs thousands. Why are you doing this? Um, that's not the reaction I was expecting. But I like you, Danny. I've not been brave enough to tell you this because I had nothing. But soon, my life would change and I can give you everything. I don't need those things. You're so wasteful and superficial. You really think money can buy anything, including feelings? Why was he so mad at me? I thought he must have noticed that I'd worked really hard for all this and even made myself look prettier for him. Okay, he might not like my gifts, but is it so bad that I want to be a little generous to myself now that I have some money? 
Things got even worse when later I arrived at work to see Kirby booking out the entire restaurant to let her Danny take a rest and enjoy dinner with her. Fine, you win, Kirby. I give up. <sighs> nothing, basically nothing went the way I wanted. My luck, my money, my man. Now I'm fine with just the 30% God gave me. I'm done chasing anyone. Only my stray friends understand me. Muffin, Brownie, Oreo. Wait, where's Cupcake? Looking for him? Let him go. This wasteful, superficial girl needs to make sure he's not starving. So you're the one who feeds them every day? Why do you care? Go back to your date with Kirby. I'm just a materialist who thinks money solves everything. I'm sorry for how I acted earlier. It's just that, at home, I'm surrounded by people who are all about money. So I hate that way of life. Why aren't you talking like you come from money or something? Yeah, kinda. My parents are the presidents of Sunland Corp. What? The biggest furniture corporation in the city? Unbelievable! So why are you working part-time at a restaurant? I want to earn my own money. An independent life suits me much better. You're so silly. Why struggle if you don't have to? If I were you, my life would be so different. I'd make sure that my mom didn't need to work all the time to make ends meet. I could even go to any expensive law school I want and care for all the stray cats and dogs I find. Surprisingly, this time, Danny didn't look at me with jaded eyes like before. Instead, he just listened patiently and gave me the sweetest smile ever. But not love. That's one thing money can't buy. H how about Kirby? Did any of her grand gestures impress you? <laughs> I prefer the cats. Our talk has confirmed that there's still a chance for me. Kirby's only advantage over me is money, but Danny doesn't care about that anyway. Is that the new student? Seems like Danny just found a worthy opponent. He's Finn. Look how he smiles whenever his opponent catches up a point. Wait, did you just call Danny someone's opponent? Someone has a new crush. Who? who? Don't talk nonsense. Right then, a ball zoomed toward us. And holy moly, Finn caught it just mere inches from Kirby's face. Are you okay? She's fine. Her face always turns red. Nothing to do with a ball. Kirby was so embarrassed that she ran off. <laughs> it seems our race took a turn. But then, shockingly, Finn turned to me and asked for my number? Huh? Does my charm glow this much? Everyone knew I liked Danny, but he's such a riddle. Hmm, maybe I could use Finn as my last card to make Danny jealous and bait Kirby to give up on our deal. What a genius I am! Then, for the next few days, whenever Danny was around, I flirted with Finn and made sure Kirby saw us. One day, I made an excuse to borrow Finn's phone. Then I secretly used it to send Danny a message to stir up his jealousy. If you don't like Clarine, then let me play with this innocent girl for a bit. And Kirby also needs a kick to admit her feelings as well, right? Actually, I like you. Looking into your eyes, I know you also have feelings for me. So... And finally, I set a date for them at the tennis court tonight at 8. If Danny doesn't want me to get hurt and Kirby doesn't want to miss her true love, they'll show up. Then I covered up my tracks, blocked both our numbers, and returned his phone. Thank you so much. Are you free tonight? Come to the tennis court. I have something important to tell you. Oh god, Finn looks like he just won the Wimbledon. That night, Finn got there early and was really excited. Let's see who will raise the curtain. Ah, it's Kirby. Oh Finn, you had me at hello. But admitting my feelings means I lose the deal with Clarine, so... What do you mean? What deal? No, no, don't get me wrong. Actually, we won the lottery and made a deal to share it. Anyways, silly me. Money can compare to you. Lottery? You two share it? Why did she even mention the money? Right when it's getting messy, Danny turned up. Bastard, now you're two-timing? Danny, why are you here? He's just playing with you. This jerk is seeing both you and Kirby. Don't let him fool you. I think Finn is a nice guy. Plus, I've told you how I felt, but you've never seemed to like me back. So Finn, we... Finn told me he liked me! Clarine, I like you. More than you know. Can't you see? I've given a lot of... hints. I always make excuses to go home with you. I told you that feelings are the most important thing to me. As in my feelings for you. Really? Idiot, how am I supposed to pick up those hints? So this daydreamer wasn't just imagining things? Turns out my plan actually did succeed. Kirby, it's true, I do like you. But I thought you were out of my league, so I just wanted to ask Clarine for help. Oh, how nice. Kirby, with a huge grin, then admitted I won. Then she dragged Finn away. Hmm, I guess my biggest win is successfully pairing up two couples.
The next morning, Kirby and I opened the trunk to get the ticket, when to our utter shock, Finn swooped in and snatched it away. While we were still processing what was going on, he ran off with our millions. But then, a shadow sent him tumbling to the ground. Danny? I saw him following you two and knew he was up to something shady. Then, Finn confessed that he transferred schools and approached me for the lottery ticket following his dad's order, who's none other than... Warren! He knew it was a jackpot-winning ticket, so he set up a plan to steal it from me! I'm so sorry. My dad's a gambling addict, which left him heavily in debt, and only this ticket could save him. Oh, Finn. I believe he's not a bad person. This ticket was originally from Warren anyway, so we both agreed to give him a share to pay off his debt. Finn was moved and handed the ticket back to us. On learning this, Warren thanked us and offered to drive us to Tallahassee to claim our prize. He even carefully got me to double-check that my ticket was in my purse. But halfway there, the car suddenly broke down, so the four of us got out and gave it a push. But as we started pushing, Warren suddenly sped away, leaving all of us standing there in shock. Where's your purse, Clarine? I left it in the car. That greedy snake Warren did this on purpose to run away with a ticket. Now what to do? Walk back home or walk to Tallahassee? Calm down. Danny already has a backup plan. This is the real ticket. Enjoy the view for now. A taxi is coming to pick us up. Actually, the moment Warren offered to drive us all the way to Tallahassee, I sent something sketchy. So I swapped the tickets. <sighs> My dad's gone too far this time. He needs to stop gambling and work hard to pay off his debts instead. Finally, we got the cash prize. However, the four of us decided not to divide it anymore. Instead, we're building a shelter for stray animals together. Surprisingly, our project soon reached many philanthropists and now our fund has been expanded across the US. Since then, Kirby is no longer obnoxious. Now she even wants to become a veterinarian. And me? I will continue to work my way into the law school of my dreams. My hard work has really paid off because they just sent me an acceptance letter. I might not be rich, but in all honesty, it doesn't matter, as I couldn't be happier. I was walking through the forest when a scream startled me. A man running in horror from a pack of wolves! I quickly howled at them, then crouched down. Distracted, the wolves stopped, left the guy, and cautiously sniffed their way over to me! Hey girl! Run away! Shush! After deciding I was no threat, they wagged their tails and started licking my face. Are, aren't you scared? Not at all. People often misunderstand wolves. This isn't Little Red Riding Hood. They're not actually grandma eaters. Come and make new friends, buddy. Hi, my name's Winona, an 18-year-old Native American living on the Blackfeet Reservation with my mom. And I'm about to tell you the craziest story of my life. After the wolves left, I helped the guy find a place to clean his wound and told him more about the wolves. So you're a Blackfoot born and bred? It's my first time meeting a Native American. How about you? What brings you here, city boy? I'm actually a pianist wandering here for inspiration. Have you found it yet? Or did you almost lose yourself just then? <laughs> Inspiration's hard to find, especially when you're a theater pianist. A what? A theater pianist. I work at Winter Garden. In New York? Wow, it's my dream to be a Broadway musical actress. Actually, my theater's looking for a stage crew. You could start from there and I'll find ways to introduce you to the right people. I couldn't let such a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity slide. But the thing is, my mom absolutely resents theater arts and forbids me to even mention it. So, I gotta devise a plan. I brought Luke home for lunch. Mom was so welcoming and even prepared a great banquet. So, Luke, right? What brings you to Montana? I'm doing a research paper for school. I'm, I'm in college. Oh, so you're around the same age as Winona. She's recently finished high school. I know, and if it wasn't for Winona, I'd be dead by now. So I was thinking, if it's okay with you, I'd like to invite her to college with me. That's nice of you. But what are you studying? Uh, hotel management. Mom, I thought I could give it a try too. But honey, you said you wanted to take a gap year. I just didn't want to try college alone. But now I've met Luke, it'll be different. Mrs. Ryder, I promise I'll take good care of her. Mom smiled, then nodded. Yes! Mission accomplished! Oh man, look at how crazy the streets of New York are. 
Thankfully, Luke arranged a small place just a few blocks away from the theater for me. And the following day, he landed me a staff member job to get me used to the theater scene first. It's not easy, especially working for a grumpy director with a zillion demands. Hey, you! Yes, you cleaning lady! Out of the way! But just being here this close to the stage is incredible, right? One day, on set for Mr. Killorn's new play, he started yelling and throwing papers everywhere. Curious, I picked up the script and saw a line written in Blackfoot. Ketsi kakumen? I love you? Mr. Killorn suddenly noticed me. Oops, I must have said it too loud. How did you learn to speak Blackfoot? My mom taught me. Oh, I live in the Blackfeet Reservation. Interesting. You know what? You're cast for the leading role in this play. Go and meet Jay, the coach, here at the theater studio. She'll instruct you further. I froze on the spot and couldn't believe what had just happened until Luke appeared, bowed to the director, and pulled me out of there. Am I finally living my dream now? Here it is, the studio from the business card. Huh? Are they shooing a coyote? This stupid guy was waving his umbrella at the snarling animal. I tried to tell everyone to back up, but no one heard my tiny voice until the guy next to me suddenly spoke up. Everyone, back up! Thank God people finally listened. I slowly advanced to the coyote, knelt, and offered my hand to him. When he seemed to trust me enough, I gently stroked his head and calmed him down. Just then, Mr. Killorn's assistant appeared and took the coyote in. Turned out, he's Mr. Killorn's pet. Who keeps a wild creature as a pet in this stuffy, urban space? You okay? You hurt anywhere? I'm fine. The poor little coyote looked terrified. You know a lot about animals, don't you? I grew up with them, yeah. In Blackfoot mythology, coyotes are guardian spirits. Well, you sure were a guardian spirit right then. I was still so touched by his words, but then Luke suddenly appeared. Winona, I just heard about what happened. You okay? What are you doing here? The guy, who was friendly just a second ago, now seemed cautious and just walked away while Luke glared at him. I'm fine. You should stay away from him. Hmm. Luke doesn't seem to like that guy. Something weird is going on between these two? I went and met Jade, our coach. She told me about the role and introduced me to Nathan, my actor partner, which happened to be the guy I just met. I couldn't help but grin and offered my hand to Nathan, but he just ignored me and turned to the script. Hello? Am I just a stranger danger now? We then tried the opening act, but since it was my first time being on a turntable, I took the wrong step and fell over. Nathan! I was blushing when he suddenly glanced at Luke and dropped me, almost kissing the floor. Right then, a girl barged in. Is everything ready for my set? You're late again, Stella. And actually, you and Winona are both gonna practice and we'll see who's right for the role. Winona who? As if this nobody can stroll in and try to steal my role? How snobby. She's lucky this nobody doesn't want to make a scene on her first day. During the break, I questioned Luke more on Stella. Stella is super talented. She's marvelous at dancing, singing, and acting. No surprise, though, because she's been training since she was little. That's exactly why we should just give her the role already. A waste of time dealing with amateurs. That was so rude. So much for ever thinking he was friendly. In the following weeks, I finally got a better grasp of my character. The female lead was a gentle, down-to-earth Blackfoot woman. Easy peasy. I just need to pretend to be my mom. <laughs> Only, my on-scene love interest Nathan was making things difficult. On stage, he refused to make eye contact with me. But he didn't have this trouble when he was up there with Stella. Every day I had lunch with Luke while Nathan and Stella were giggling in another corner, acting as if they were the most powerful couple here. Are they really... in love? Oh, Winona, please. Why should you care? After lunch, I ignored Stella's glaring eyes and focused on being Nathan's lover on stage. What kind of singing is that? Give me a break already. That's enough, Stella. Actually, I just informed Mr. Killorn over lunch that Winona's getting the role. Ha! Huh, very funny. No, it's not a joke. Look at your performance recently, Stella. It's rather disappointing. Winona, keep up the good work. Stella looked like she'd had the blood sucked out of her. I excitedly beamed at Luke, but strangely he looked concerned and ran after Stella. Does he have feelings for her? See that? Why hasn't he just confessed his feelings for Stella already and stopped this unrequited love tragedy? Isn't it because you and Stella are together? And that's also why you're so half-hearted whenever you're on set with me? It's not like that. I just couldn't control myself every time our eyes met. What did he mean by that? 
Congrats, anyways. I always knew you deserved this role. He's right. I'd really worked super hard for this. I'm so close to achieving my dream now. The next day, I rushed into the first official rehearsal and acted my heart out in front of Mr. Killorn and the whole crew. I was dancing away to Luke's sentimental track when the door slammed open. It was Mom! I can't believe you lied to me and came here to do these foolish antics! Oh no. Mr. Killorn turned pale while Jade gasped upon seeing Mom. I tried to tell Mom to let me finish this scene, but... Fine! Be this way! Until you come to your senses, you're not my daughter anymore! Mum then stormed out of there. Mr. Killorn told everyone to take a break and also left. I stormed over to Luke and asked if he told my mum the truth. But right when he was stammering, Mr. Killorn came between us. I didn't know you had to lie to your mum to get here. Yeah, sadly. She knows about my acting dream, but she has always been so negative about it. Hmm, is that so? Well, you're doing a great job. Continue practicing for the play. And maybe... Take me to your mom sometime, and I'll try and explain this to her. Encouraged by the director's feedback, the next day I confidently acted my part. Yet Jade seemed dissatisfied and criticized my movements, saying they were too rigid. Winona, I'm giving the role to Stella. You need more training. What? I'm not some toy you can throw back and forth. Was it all just a show to get me and her to pit against each other? What was that about? Why the change? You're not qualified. Go back to your mother. What has this to do with my mother? I didn't know what was going on, but I was sure of one thing. I needed to prove myself, so I stayed at the studio practicing, swinging, and swaying my soul away under the studio light until I accidentally sprained my ankle. Right then, Nathan came out and helped me up. Why are you still here? I saw you stay, so I thought I'd stick around for a little longer. As he spoke, he gently pressed an ice bag on my ankle. I felt the butterflies flapping in my stomach, but suddenly remembered his attitude before and pushed him away, ready to stand up just to fall into his embrace again. You must think I'm so hot and cold, but I just didn't want Luke to misunderstand anything. What do you mean? We're just friends, and what's up with you and Luke? Then he told me how he and Stella were the best of friends back at acting school until Luke appeared. Luke was instantly attracted to Stella and asked Nathan to set them up. Nathan, of course, happily agreed. However, the next day, Stella suddenly expressed her feelings for Nathan right in front of Luke. Luke didn't take it too well and thought I was messing with him. He's resented me ever since. So, you and Stella are just friends? We are. Stella might appear childish, but she's good-natured. She's just... she's dealing with a lot inside. I've just been watching over her. But right now, she's gonna have to learn to stand on her own since I think I've met my guardian spirit. His guardian spirit? We were so close, I swear we were almost kissing. But I quickly pulled away, saying I gotta go practice. The final rehearsal is my only chance to get my role back now. I showed up just as a substitute today, but when everybody was ready to rehearse, the only person missing was Stella. No one seemed able to contact her, and the director was growing impatient. Jade had no other choice but to push me onto the stage. Luke didn't seem too happy with this replacement and suddenly played the piano much faster than expected. Flustered, I took a deep breath and let myself float naturally to his rhythm. During the intermission, I asked Luke what that was about. Drop it, Winona. I already knew. You got in here all thanks to your director dad, yet you fooled me with your little story. It's you who forced Stella away from her chosen role. Who's my dad? Mr. Killorn? Right then I was called for the next act. Still puzzled by what Luke said, I couldn't focus on my part with Nathan. Suddenly, I heard Nathan scream my name and leapt to push me to the side. I fell on the floor and saw the massive chandelier land on Nathan. Everybody rushed to check on us, and among the crowd came, Mom? We were all waiting for the doctor to check on Nathan when Luke suddenly spoke out. I'm sorry for what I said, but Jade told me Mr. Killorn is your dad, and you guys forced Stella to drop her role. Mr. Killorn and I both gave Mom astounded eyes. Winona's my... my daughter? That's right, Andrew. But don't worry. As soon as Nathan's recovered, I'll bring Winona back home and will not bother you and Jade again. No, no, you've got it all wrong. Why didn't you tell me about our daughter? Jade said if I told you, she would harm Winona. Wait, does this have anything to do with the accident? Because right before the act, I saw Jade talking to a crew member who set up the stage for Nathan and Winona. I'll get this looked into at once. So, this play about Andrew and a Blackfoot woman falling in love, is it about you and Mom? Mr. Killorn didn't reply, but looked at Mom tenderly. 
and she burst out crying. Right then, the doctor came out, saying we could visit Nathan. Luke quickly pulled me aside, leaving the adults there. How are you feeling? Any discomfort? You're not mad at me anymore? Yeah, um, sorry for being a jerk. It's alright, dude. Go find Stella before she leaves. She said she was sick of being thrown around. She's taking a leave to reassess a few things. But why me? Aren't you? We're just friends. How many times do I have to tell you? Luke didn't even wait for Nathan to finish and rushed out of there. I wish them a happy ending. And it's indeed happy endings all round. Not only for Luke and Stella who are now officially an item, but also for Mom and Mr. Killorn. Or should I say, Dad? Our family has finally reunited. On the other hand, Jade vanished as soon as her schemes were out in the open. Turns out, all of this was because she'd been in love with my dad for years. So back when Mom was dating Dad, she told her lies about him to get her to leave. Furious that both Mom and I were back, she decided to make us go for good. Dad helped me get a spot in the theater academy in New York, but he misses Mom lots, so always makes excuses to bring me and Nathan back to Montana. You guys need more inspiration, right? New York's just all hustle and bustle. So, how about we move the studio back here? Nathan, what do you think? I don't know, but wherever you are, that's where I'll be. Hey, I'm Esther of the rising TikTok channel at Aesthetic, where I share my passion for fashion. Look at my newest design. Cool, huh? Who would have thought newspaper was a great material for making dresses? I was trying one on and posing for photos when I heard a knock on my door. That's my mom and dad. Esther, we have some good news. We're moving. What? I'm being transferred to another branch in San Francisco. Can you believe we'll be living in that sunny city? No, no, we can't move. I'm, I'm a senior already. All my friends are here. Mom! Just get over it and start packing. This is our one chance at a better life. Why can't they understand that I'm not simply shy, but actually have major social anxiety? It's a real thing that I can't just get over. That's also why my 2 million TikTok followers still haven't seen my face yet. I could barely handle the stress from across the screen, never mind being alone in a brand new school full of strangers. Oh gosh, this place must be twice as big as my old school. It's gonna take forever to find the bathroom. Man, it feels like a thousand eyes are on me. Or maybe not, but I can't risk looking around. What if someone makes eye contact? My palms are sweaty, my heartbeat is so loud I can hardly hear anything else. But then... Some hot couple walked in and literally ate up the entire hallway's attention. Good, surely no one would notice me now. It was so exhausting running from one class to the next. Now, where do I sit? I walked over to a table, but no one batted an eye. I wasn't sure if I should sit down or not, when suddenly, a pretty girl appeared. Sky blue. Sorry? Anyway, you're new, right? I'm Jojo, class president. Come sit with us. I followed her to another table. Hi guys, got space for two more? Yeah, sure, the more the merrier. Oh no, that girl doesn't sound too happy about having me here. But it would be too awkward to just get up and leave. Uh, hi, I'm Esther. Hey, didn't know they serve fresh tomatoes here. Finish your lunch, Amanda. We have homework to do. Phew, yeah, think about your homework, guys. Don't mind me. I got to know the school layout a bit better, so the next day wasn't as hard. Until I saw some girl waving at me. She looked like Jojo, but her eyes weren't blue. Must be her twin sister or a doppelganger waving at someone behind me. You really just got ghosted in real life? And you call yourself class president? I flinched. So that actually was the class president from yesterday? How strange. Then, my absolute worst nightmare came true in biology class. We had to work in pairs. Okay, which group would like a new member? Anyone? Please, help a girl out. I see you're in a desperate need of a partner, Zeke. Why don't you raise your hand so Esther can see where you are? I saw an arm at the back of the class, so I walked towards it. Hi, newbie. Esther, right? My name is... Baby Blue Emerald Green? Hey, do my eyes look funny to you, new girl? Jeez, I didn't mean to upset him, so I ended up explaining that I'd had issues with eye contact since I was little, so my mom made me pay attention to strangers' eye colors to make it seem like I looked them in the eye. She even asked me what color their eyes were afterwards to make sure I did what she asked. 
Well, even though I did, that trick never actually helped me get over my social anxiety. In fact, I usually only notice other people's eye color, not their names or how the rest of their faces look. You're weird, but I believe you. I don't like interacting with other humans either. They tend to pick on me because of my eyes. It shouldn't come as a surprise that us shy kids got along pretty well. Zeke taught me biology and chemistry after class, while I helped him with his Spanish homework. Thanks to him, lunchtime isn't as stressful anymore. We could chat away about anime for hours and he's supportive of my fashion obsession. So I felt comfortable enough to tell him about my TikTok account. He still liked to tease me from time to time though. I reader, what color are their eyes? You know, the powerhouses, Colin and Amanda over there. No way. I never look pretty guys in the eye because I'll immediately turn into a walking tomato. Same thing for hot girls. I don't want them to think I'm trying to pick a fight with them or something. You're that avoidant? Have you ever made eye contact with anyone here except me? Yep. Jojo, the blue-eyed girl. Blue? You know her eyes are brown, right? She likes wearing contacts. Jojo changes her eye color, hair, and accessories every week. She's quite a chameleon. Too bad she seems so smitten with that boring guy Colin Gray. Wow, someone clearly has a crush on Jojo. <laughs> but actually, I think Z could be quite a catch too, if he wasn't so insecure about his heterochromia. Speaking of Jojo, have you heard about her Halloween party? What about it? Well, I thought about going, but I have no costume. Forget it. It's not like she'd notice me there anyway. No! You should definitely go! I can help in the costume department! So, here we are! I'd successfully transformed my timid friend into King Lelouch. Who else but Zeke and his unique eye colors could pull this off? As his personal stylist, he insisted I come with him. I'm not even dressed up though. Oh man, I can hear my heart pounding already thinking about how many people will be in there. But I'm not the type to abandon my friend. So, let's go. As soon as everyone saw his majesty, they went silent. Then erupted when he flipped his cape. Look at him. <laughs> his ego must be through the roof right now. I then swiftly stepped back to a corner. So, this is what a house party is like. Suddenly, I overheard two girls talking. Aesthetic is definitely from our school, or Zeke had some connections. Yeah, I swear this is the exact same outfit Aesthetic has been prepping on her channel. Oh, come on. There could be hundreds of Lelouch costumes during this spooky season. Girls, please stop speculating. Aesthetic is totally not from this school. I- Hey there, what's your costume? A shy, cute girl? I- I- um, nice Stranger Things shirt. Yeah, I look even better than Eddie, don't I? Um, yeah, totes. So I have this thing. Gotta go, bye! Then they ran straight out of there. That was too much socializing for one day. After that party, I noticed Zeke started to hang out with Jojo and became much more confident. I was happy for him, but he was no longer the same guy. One time, we agreed to study together in the library, but he stood me up. When we met the following day, he said he hadn't touched his homework yet because he was out with Jojo. And then, asked to copy mine. Sure, fine. But when he was done, he flat out refused to teach me chemistry as he was too busy. Things were that way for a while, until today when I found out the shocking truth. Esther, I only keep her around to do my Spanish homework. You know she's a total buzzkill. Excuse me? Your free homework trial has expired. So much for we're friends, huh? Everyone, look! Someone finally came to some self-realization. How adorable! <laughs> Tell them, Zeke! Did you know she has to make her own clothes? Pathetic! Who was this guy? He's the total opposite of the boy I'd got to know over the past couple of months. Am I in the upside down? It's over. Zeke and I were practically strangers now. Back to my gloomy and lonely life. Annoyingly, I saw Zeke again that day, this time on the school paper. This smug jerk gave an interview on the now famous Lelouch look. However, in that article, Jojo claimed to be aesthetic, the creator behind that costume, while Zeke backed up her entire story. What in the world? And Jojo even showed some of the sketches that I shared on my account. I was furious and went to confront Jojo, but somehow she didn't seem to be faced at all. <laughs> So what if you're the real aesthetic? I can be her too, don't you think? If you have a problem with that, then let's go sort it out. Attention everyone! This is Esther. You probably don't know her, but who cares? She has something to share. The floor is yours, girl. Everyone's gaze turned towards me. Holy moly, where should I look? Why is this so different from talking to the camera? My entire body went into crisis mode. God no, something's coming up. Run!
Although I calmed myself down, I couldn't face anyone right now. This is the worst day of my life. Suddenly, someone tapped my shoulder. Amanda? What does this social butterfly want? Did she just ask me if I was okay? Okay? No, I'm not okay. Why is it that girls like you and Jojo, who already have everything, always want to take away everything? Hey, I'm just trying to be nice here. If it wasn't for my silly little friend... What? What are you talking about? Never mind. Sorry, but you don't seem okay. Come with me. I think I know how to make you feel better. Come on, skipping one class won't kill you, but bad mental health will. I wiped away my tears and went with Amanda, even though I barely knew her. But she had a point. The last thing I need right now is a stuffy classroom. Here it is. Go inside. There'll be someone who can help you. That's weird, but alright. I stepped inside, and it was like being hugged by the smells of wood and paper. It felt healing, for sure. I was browsing through the store, then saw Colin walk over. Startled, I stuck my face into an empty slot on a bookshelf to avoid him, but... <coughs> this place is filled with dust! Surprisingly, Colin only smiled and gently wiped the dust off my face. Um, if you're looking for your girlfriend, Amanda just left. She's not my girlfriend. And actually, I asked her to bring you here. Wh what Why? Just calm down. I got you something. How do you know my favorite genre? Because I've seen you read to calm yourself down before. Turns out, Colin had been observing me from a distance for some time, so he even remembered what I usually read. He was hesitant to talk to me though, afraid that all the unwanted attention he might attract would make me feel uncomfortable. But now, everyone knows I like you. Sorry about that. Don't be. It's my fault and my anxieties. I can help you with that. Esther, would you go to prom with me? How will that help? It will. Trust me. Oh, his eyes are... gray? I realized I've been talking to him all this time just fine without using the old trick. What if this guy really could help me? On prom night, Colin drove me there. While he was parking his car, I waited in front of the venue. Out of nowhere, Zeke approached me. Listen, there's not much time. You gotta listen to me. Jojo plans to give you an award, but it's only to get you to stand on the X mark on the stage where the trap door is. She wants to humiliate you in front of the entire school because you're with the guy she likes. So be careful. What game are you trying to play here? Why are you telling me this? I want to make things right. Jojo took advantage of my feelings for her, and I was too blind to see that she only liked Colin, and she's been using me to hurt you. This is my chance to make it up to you, so please, don't go up there. It's a trap. Stop it already. I won't let you make a fool of me again. Right on time, Colin came to the rescue. Haven't you done enough? Stay away from her. I'm truly sorry, Esther. Inside, we were greeted by Amanda. Congrats, bro. I'm finally free from the Collins Rumor Girlfriend label. Jojo must be green with envy seeing how cute you two are together. Right. She's here, as well as hundreds of other people. Nope, I can't do this. I quickly crawled under a table and curled up into a ball. Still, Colin remained patient. You are absolutely stunning tonight. Honestly, your dress is amazing. Come out. Let the whole world see you. The world will only laugh in my face. Okay, then let me join you. It's actually quite cozy down here. What are you doing? Well, tonight is a special night, and my date's a special girl. So I figured we could totally enjoy it in an unusual way. I feel like my insides just turned into a hot, liquidy mess. Who would have thought that I could meet someone who goes out of their way to make me happy? We chatted for a while, then noticed that the lights outside were dimmed for the slow dance. Let's go. Hand in hand, Colin and I swayed to the melody, feeling like we were the only people in the room. Then, the music suddenly stopped. They were about to present tonight's awards for remarkable students. And now, Best Dressed of the Night Award goes to... Esther Crawford! No way! What Zeke said immediately came to my mind. I turned around to see Zeke looking concerned and shaking his head. Maybe he'd been telling the truth after all. You don't have to go up there if you don't feel like it. Colin was as understanding as always. But then I saw Jojo's smug face. I couldn't let her win again. So I mustered all my courage and stepped onto the stage, but steered clear of the X mark Zeke mentioned. Thank you, everybody. But I believe another person deserves this award much more than me. She's none other than our hardworking class president, Jojo. That's so sweet of you, but it's yours. Please, step up to receive it. You mean here? No, one step forward. Here? 
Jojo became impatient and rushed towards me. No! You have to stand here! Right back at you, Jojo. Have a taste of your own medicine. Now that's some headline material for the school paper. <laughs> so, today is the day. My long overdue face reveal. This is such a beautiful dress, right guys? If you're wondering who this strange girl is, Hi, I'm Esther, and I'm the person behind At Aesthetic. This dress right here, it's what I wore to senior prom. Settle in, I'm doing a face reveal and story time video.